Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Narahina Naruto create harem with Hinata female Kaiu X female Haku X female Sasu Kiba bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Immortal at Dragon and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. First of all I would like to thank the Purple Critic for allowing me to adopt the story. I hope you eventually read this and tell me what you think. Disclaimer I do not own Naruto if I did Sasuke would have came back to the village and gotten together with Sakura and Naruto would have gotten together with Hinata. Summary. What if Naruto gave into the fox's power? What if he became her successor and surpassed her? Will he destroy the village that has forsaken him? Will he remain cold or can force certain girls that love him reawaken his heart? Demonic semi-cold but only when necessary Sharingan wielding Naruto. Hiba, Arachimaru, and Akatsuki bashing. Pairings Naritixin attacks female Kaiwa Bix female Hakux female Sasuke no exceptions other pairings will be mentioned as story continues. Chapter 1. The Teams. The ninja academy where several young children sought to become ninja were busy chattering amongst one another as they discussed from simple matters such as weapons to the most advanced ninja arts being jutsu. Others on the other hand were discussing who they would have on their teams and even what their jinin sensei would be like. Suddenly without warning the classroom door flew open as a 20-year-old man walked in. The 20-year-old stood five, had light brown hair that was done up in a high ponytail, brown eyes, and a scare that ran from underneath his left eye to his right. He was wearing blue pants, a blue long sleeve shirt, blue sandals, and he wore a green vest that had six pockets on the front. Calmly he allowed his eyes to scan over his students. The first person he set his eyes on was a male that was no older than 12 years old, had golden sun-kissed hair along with the blood-red tips, his eyes were cold cerulean blue, he stood around 4'6", and he looked well-built for a child his age. He was wearing a black shirt with a kanji for blood on the front in the color of blood-red, black cargo pants, black ninja sandals with hidden retractable blades hidden in the soles, and on top of that he wore a black trench coat that reached to his ankles, while the kanji for death was present on the back in a deep purple. If one were paying enough attention they would have noticed the nine golden tails swish behind him before they fully disappeared almost as if they weren't there. The boy's name was none other than Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. He was wearing his hide on his forehead. The boy was also the container for the most powerful of all the creatures in the land, the Kaiubi no Kitsune. His father the Yadame Hokage, Minato Namikas, wanted him to be seen as a hero for containing the legendary beast. Then shortly after it happened. The loss of his first, best, and only friend was killed in front of him. The only good thing that came out of it was the gaining of a Dejutsu. The legendary Sharingan and then the final form the Manjekyo Sharingan, but at a terrible price of losing someone who was beyond precious to him. Let's just that in the end no one dared to ever approach the child except for a select few. Naruto you suffered so much and look at what it's made you become. If anyone ever had a reason to destroy this village, it's you Naruto. Thought the teacher before he continued to allow his eyes to wander over the rest of his students. The next person his eyes landed on was a young female that was also no older than 12 years of age, had black hair with blue streaks running through it that reached to her mid-back, her eyes were cold black, and she stood 4'5", and she was well built for her age. She was wearing a blue Chinese top with ruby red dragon surrounding a red fan with a white handle on her back, white shorts, blue sandals, and on her left leg, she wore a shuriken and kuni pouch. Her height was currently on her head. The girl was Sasuke Ichiha, and the last remaining loyal Ichiha and Kanoha left after her elder brother killed the whole clan. She too also unlocked the Manjekyo Sharingan the same night and killed her brother, but not before he told her something that she never told anyone. She was also one of the few who was able to approach Naruto. The third person was another male that stood for, had spiky brown hair that was being held back by his height, looked no older than 12 years old, and he wore sunglasses. The young adult wore a light grey trench coat that covered his lower face, blue pants, and blue sandals. He also wore a kuni and shuriken pouch on his left leg. That boy's name was Shino Aburam, and the current and only heir to the Aburam clan. The Aburam clan was unique since they willingly allowed bugs to inhabit their bodies, and in return the bugs would assist them in battle. The fourth person was a female that stood 4'5", had blonde hair that was pulled up into a ponytail that reached to the mid-back, and had light blue eyes. She was wearing a purple tank top, along with a matching purple skirt, while her height was being used for a belt. That girl's name was Ino Yamanaka heir to the Yamanaka clan. The Yamanaka clan specialized in mind manipulation jutsu. Right next to Ino was a girl that stood for, had pink hair that reached to her waist, along with her height holding her bangs back, and she also had forest green eyes. She was wearing a red Chinese style dress with a white circle in the center, while a line ran down the center of the dress, reached to her knees with slits on both sides, black bicycle shorts, and blue ninja sandals. 
She also had a kuni and shuriken pouch on her right leg. The girl's name was Sakura Haruno, and she came from a civilian family with no ninja history. She was one of the many people who feared Naruto but at least attempted to be nice to even if it meant sparing her family's life or her own. Next to Sakura was a male that was slouched on his desk fast asleep. The boy stood 4-4, had black hair placed up to look like a pineapple, black eyes, and looked completely at peace. He was wearing a fishnet shirt with a grey shirt on top, along with his hide on his left arm, black pants, blue sandals, and a shuriken and kuni pouch on his right leg. The boy's name was Shikamaru Nara and the heir to the Nara clan. The clan specialized in shadow manipulation jutsu and having excellent tactical strategy skills. Sitting next to Shikamaru was another boy who was busy eating a bag of potato chips. The boy stood 4-3, had light brown hair, red swirls on his cheeks, and black eyes. He was wearing a white shirt with a red symbol on the stomach, a green short sleeve shirt over the other, a white scarf wrapped around his neck, grey shorts, and blue sandals. He also wore bandages from his wrists up to his elbows. The boy was Choji Akamichi and current clan heir to the Akamichi clan. The Akamichi clan excelled in body jutsu that could increase any part of their body or the whole body if needed. He was also rather husky. Sitting behind Choji was another boy. This boy stood 4'2", had wild unkempt brown hair, brown eyes with a slit running through the center, and red tattoos on his face that looked similar to fangs. He was wearing a grey sweat jacket, brown pants, and blue sandals. On his head was a small white puppy. The boy's name was Kiba Inuzuka, and his puppy's name is Akamaru. Kiba was also the clan heir for the Inuzuka clan and had an older sister. His family were proficient in team combat. Finally sitting next to Kiba was a young female. The female stood for one, had midnight blue hair and white pupilless eyes. She was wearing a large pale jacket, blue ninja pants, and blue ninja sandals. The girl was Hinata Hayuga and the current heir to the Hayuga clan. The clan is well known because of their famed eye to jutsu the Byakugan. Despite that fact she was constantly ridiculed by her own father, sister, and the elders of her clan because of her shy and caring nature. After a few months though she apparently had enough as she defeated her sister in a spar and told off not only her father but the elders as well. It was even stated that she was going to become the second Ice Queen of Konoha. Well let's get this over with. Thought Aruka before he walked to the center of the room. First of I would like to congratulate all of you on passing and becoming full ninja of Konoha. Now then I will announce the teams. Proudly stated Aruka only to realize that no one was paying attention to him. Silently he released a sigh before he started to perform a few hand signs. Ninjutsu. Onihitsu. Silently whispered Aruka before he took in a large breath. Everyone shut up and sit down. Shouted Aruka as his head grew four sizes large, causing everyone to shut up and sit down. But now that I have your attention. The teams are as follows Team 7. Naruto Yuzumaki, Sasuke Chiha, and Hinata Hayuga under Jinin Sensei Kakashi Heikate. Team 8. Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi, and Shikamaru Nara in Dirjman Sensei Asuma Suratobi. Team 9 is still in circulation from last year, so Team 10. Kiba Inuzuka, Sakura Haruno, and Shino Aburam under Jinin Kurana Yuhi. Stated Aruka causing quite a few people to groan in disappointment and others to silently cheer in their heads. Now then your Jinin Senseis will be here after lunch, so until then you are free to do as you please just remember to be here when your Jinin Sensei. Naruto, Sasuke and Hinata I would like for you to remain behind though. Said Aruka in a serious tone before everyone other than the earlier three left the classroom while snickering at their misfortune. Aruka sensei why did you ask for us to remain behind? Asked Sasuke as she and her teammates walked down to Aruka's desk. I just wanted to talk to all of you and I'm not your sensei anymore so just call me Aruka. Said Aruka with a smile while everyone else just smiled in their own unique way. Does this mean that I can remove it? Coldly asked Naruto as he looked at his older brother figure. That is your decision and yours alone Naruto. Simply stated Aruka as he looked Naruto in the eyes. We're going to my house. Simply stated Naruto as he walked out of the classroom with the others following after looking at as if he were crazy. Five minutes later. Okay here we are. Said Naruto as he stopped in front of a building. The building was four stories tall, run down, rat and critter infested dump. Naruto's teammates were calm on the outside, but internally they were cursing whatever god they could think of for causing Naruto to live in this dump. Iruka on the other hand just smiled sadly as he looked at the building already knowing that Naruto lived here. Silently everyone followed Naruto up to the fourth floor and noticed graffiti along the wall. Some of the graffiti said, die demon, crawl into a ditch and die hell spawn, and a rather common one you killed my family Kai Ubi, and I'll kill you internally, once more the girls were bristling with anger, but opted to remain calm. For a few more minutes everyone followed Naruto up until he stopped at the last door. What happens behind this door stays behind this door understand. 
said Naruto in his usual cold tone. Of course Naruto you have our word. Said everyone while they noticed him relax slightly before he cut his finger and ran the blood over the door. Shortly after the door opened and everyone steeped inside before they stopped and their jaws fell to the ground. The room was extremely small, having only 8 foot walls and the ceiling only being roughly 6 feet in the air. The walls were filled with holes, peeling paint, and water stains. The kitchen was only 2 feet by 4 feet, while the rest of the room acted as a bedroom living room. There was a single hallway on the right wall that led to what everyone guessed was the bathroom and closet. Most of the floor was covered in sweat and blood stains. The bed mattress was old and had material coming out of it, but otherwise most of the major holes had been sewed up. Almost all of the covers on the bed were ripped and had holes in them, but that wasn't what shocked them. No it was the fact that there was a female sleeping in the bed. The female stood 5'1", had deep blood red hair that reached down to her waist, deep crimson eyes with a black slit running through the center, had a e-cup breast size, and she looked no older than 12. Currently the only thing that she was wearing was the bed covers. Hey I'm back. Said Naruto as he walked over to the sleeping female. Silently everyone just watched as the female latched onto Naruto's waist before she mumbled something into it. By the way I have guests with me. Said Naruto once more causing the female to sit up in sudden alarm while pulling a kuni out from underneath the bed. Who the hell are you and what have you done to Naruto? Demanded the female as she held the kuni to Naruto's neck, causing a faint trail of blood to come out. Relax it's me and I just brought my teammates here. Oh and get some clothes on. Said Naruto as if it were an ordinary subject. Immediately after that the female looked behind Naruto only to blush heavily before she ran towards the bathroom. Sorry she isn't used to having others over other than the hokage. Said Naruto as he motioned for the others to take a seat wherever they could find one. Okay so why are we here again? Asked Sasuke as she looked at Naruto who just started the ceiling before he performed a single hand sign and two more of him popped into existence. You two go and make some lunch. Naruto stated before the clones walked off. The reason why we are here is so we can understand one another. I'm going to tell you everything about me and then after that you will also be required to do so. Stated Naruto with authority in his voice. Now as you already know I'm Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. My parents were Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikas. Now on the day of my birth the Kaiubi no Kitsune attacked my father being Hokage at the time, decided to seal the Kaiubi into me his only son. His reason was that if he couldn't sacrifice his own son, how could he ask a villager to do the same for him? He also wanted me to be seen as a hero for containing the Kaiubi. Started Naruto before he released a sad sigh. Sadly he was wrong instead of treating me like a hero they treated me like trash no, not it was more like I was something less than dirt. For six years I suffered under the constant torment of the villagers, mostly it was name calling and beatings. No matter what I took them. Then I met her. Her name was Mitsumi and she was an orphan like me and became my best and only friend. For two years we pulled pranks, stole food, and even lived together, but that all changed. Said Naruto in a happy tone before it turned grim with remorse, self-doubt, and hatred. On the day of my ninth birthday the villagers kidnapped her and me. They had us tied up in chairs started Naruto before his eyes bleed red, and the next thing everyone knew they saw a young boy and girl tied to chairs. The boy looked to be nine years old, had spiky blood hair, cerulean blue eyes, stood only three five, three whisker-like marks on his cheeks, and looked malnourished. He was wearing a raggedy white t-shirt covered in dirt, black shorts, and he was barefoot. Naruto. Everyone thought in confusion before they turned towards the young girl. The girl also looked to be nine years old, had long black hair that was tied into a ponytail, light brown eyes, stood 3-4, and she also looked malnourished. She was also wearing a raggedy white t-shirt that was covered in dirt, black shorts, and she was also barefoot. Suddenly without warning the room was filled with light as a door behind all of them was opened, causing the two Jenin and Chknin to turn around in shock. Standing in the doorway were several villagers, at least four Chknin, one Jnin, and two Anbu members. Slowly all of them walked into the room until they were standing in front of Naruto and the girl in three single file lines. Out of all the people in the room only one person stood out. A man that stood 5'6", had emerald green eyes and pink hair. He was wearing a red shirt, red pants, and red cloth shoes. Comfortable? Asked a pink-haired man while he motioned to the two Anbu to guard the door while he walked towards Naruto and right through Ruka, Sasuke, and Hinata. What was that? Wondered the three as they turned around. Well what do you want? Asked Naruto as he looked at the pink-haired man. Oh just about the same thing as everyone in this room wants from you. Your blood Kaiubi. Stated the pink-haired man with an insane look on his face while his voice dripped with hatred. What are you talking about Naruto isn't the Kaiubi. Shouted the girl before she was slapped across the face. Shut up you little demon slut. Snarled out the pink-haired man while many in the crowd grinned at the girl's pain. 
Now where were we started up the pink haired man once more as he took up a thinking pose, oh yeah now I remember. Not long after finishing the man pulled out a kuni before he quickly stabbed it into Naruto's left hand, causing him to scream in pain. Shortly after all of the people in the crowd were throwing broken glass, rusty kitchen knives, kuni, shuriken, and rocks at Naruto. What are you people doing stop it? Shouted the female once more as she struggled against her restraints only to receive a backhand to the face. It wasn't long before the crowd split up into two different groups, each designated to torturing their victim to death. For hours on end Aruka, Sasuke, and Hinata watched as the people did unimaginable damage to Naruto and the girl. They watched as the people broke both legs and arms, before they would stick Senbin into the major nerve locations on their broken arms and legs, causing them further pain. They would then watch as some of the Chiknin would cast minor Jinjutsu on Naruto, forcing him to watch as the girl was raped before him, while the girl watched the several hundred ways they would torture them. After that they were forced to watch as some of the civilians took torches and placed them out, leaving them only smoldering before they would press the hot tips onto the children causing severe burns. So how do you feel? Asked a pink-haired man while he absent-mindedly picked up a sword and inspected it. He then pulled out one of his own hairs before he dropped it onto the blade. The second the hair strand struck the blade it immediately was split into two. Naruto could say nothing as watched a pink-haired man while constantly looking over to the girl who looked very much already dead. Nothing to say. Well maybe this will get you to talk. Said the man as his voice rose as he swung the sword at the girl. Almost acting on instinct Naruto attempted to jump in the way of the blade, only to be stopped by his restraints and forced to watch as the blade went straight through the girl's heart, causing her to scream in pain while coughing up blood. But Sumi-chan whispered Naruto underneath his breath while his eyes filled with tears. I'm sorry but did you say something demon? Asked the pink-haired man as he twisted the blade 360 degrees before roughly pulling it out of Mitsumi's chest. He then proceeded to flick the blood off of the blade onto Naruto's face as his eyes began to cry blood. I'm gonna kill you whispered Naruto once more while he began to clench and unclench his fists. I'm sorry I didn't quite hear you could you please repeat that? Asked a pink-haired man while he leaned in close to Naruto. I said I'm gonna kill you said Naruto once more only louder, while the pink-haired man backed away and turned his back on him. That's what I thought you said. Stated the man before he quickly turned on his heel and stabbed the sword straight through Naruto's heart while releasing an insane laugh. Silently Aruka, Hinata, and Sasuke watched in anger as Naruto lost consciousness before they too began to notice the room was changing. The room was slowly turning into a long hallway with cracked walls, pipes overhead, and ankle-length water covering the floor. Floating in the water was Naruto looking up towards the ceiling with dead eyes before he looked down the hallway, and the others doing the same saw a red glow. Calmly Naruto walked towards the light while the rest of them followed. It wasn't long before they found themselves in another room that was huge and had a gate at the other end. On the gate was a single piece of paper that held the kanji for seal on it. Silently they watched as Naruto walked towards the gate before he stopped as a large clawed hand came out of the gate and stopped a few inches from Naruto's face. Naruto just stood there with his cold dead eyes looking past the claw and directly into a pair of blood red eyes that were trained on his own. So this is my container? Asked a voice as rows of sharp teeth appeared and then a whole body of a large kitsune with nine tails. So you are the reason why I'm hated. Stated Naruto with no emotion while he continued to look in the Kyuubi's eyes. What do you mean? Growled out the Kyuubi while its eyes seemed to change from rage to confusion. Look through my memories. Was all Naruto said before he walked towards the cage and sat down looking down the hallway he came from. Kyuubi on the other hand was silently watching several of Naruto's memories, while Laruka, Hinata, and Sasuke also watched every beating, comment, and other things that happened to Naruto over the course of his short life. At the end of it Kaiubi was releasing large amounts of killing intent while it looked at Naruto in a new light. I'm interesting my own father sacrificed me. Fool. Sneered Naruto while he shook his head in disgust. You went through my memories didn't you? Silently growled out Kaiubi. Only the ones in which you were sealed into me. I just wanted to see if the Yandane would mention my parents. Stated Naruto in a cold tone while the Kaiubi mumbled something about dumbass blondes. Okay how would you like for the chance to give the same if not greater pain to those villagers? Asked the Kaiubi as it looked at Naruto. I would love to do that Kaiubi chan Stated Naruto with a smile that was filled with evil intentions, while the Kaiubi looked at Naruto with a dumbfounded expression on her face. Almost immediately after the Kaiubi quickly regained its thought process by shaking its head. Then pull off the seal. Kaiubi said as it pointed to the seal with the tip of its tail. Silently Naruto looked at it before he jumped up and grabbed a hold of two of the bars. He then proceeded to climb up until he was face to face with the seal. Quickly Naruto grabbed the seal before he completely ripped it off before he was blasted back into the real world. 
once more everyone watched as the room changed back into the same room they were in earlier with the civilians just about to leave the room before they were stopped as black flames rose up from the ground. Quickly the civilians turned around only to have their rage become more prominent on their face had seen Naruto freed from his bonds and standing up. I'm going to kill you said Naruto as he rose his head up, causing all the civilians to step back in shock. Naruto's eyes were now a deep blood red with a black pupil and three black comma marks spinning in around the center. Tsukiyomi. Whispered Naruto before everyone, other than Aruka, Hinata and Sasuke, found themselves bound to crosses while Naruto stood in front of them while a female stood behind him. The female stood 5'1", looked no older than 20, had deep blood red hair that reached down to her waist and deep crimson eyes with a black vertical slit running through the center. She was wearing a blood red kimono with a white fox with nine tails, cunning along the edge that also did little to hide her e cup bust. Behind her lightly swaying were nine blood red tails. For the next 72 hours you will experience all my pain that I have been placed through for the last nine years. Have fun. Said Naruto without emotion before he disappeared along with the female leaving behind villagers and ninjas screaming at him to force him to release them. Suddenly without warning Naruto collapsed while holding his hands over his stomach, while deep crimson chakra covered him before it started to concentrate over his stomach. Not long after the chakra burst forth before it began to form into a small red fox with nine tails in front of Naruto. Shortly afterward both Naruto and the fox fell to the ground and the room began to rapidly change before Hinata's, Sasuke's, and Aruka's eyes. Now they were standing in a hospital room with Naruto laying on a hospital bed with several machines connected to him monitoring his heart rate, blood pressure, and several other vital aspects. Naruto thought everyone sadly before the hospital room door opened and a man stepped in. The man stood 6'1", had a white beard on his chin, and an old face that radiated with sadness and several other emotions that were constantly changing. The man was wearing a white robe with a red line running down the center of the robe and a square hat that had a single red triangle with a white kanji for fire. Good afternoon Naruto, how are you feeling? Asked the old man as he walked towards Naruto before he sat down on the bedside. How do I feel? Reiterated Naruto as he shook from me the rage or sadness but they couldn't tell. For starters I not only get attacked on my birthday once again, but this time the villagers took the liberty of also torturing Mitsumi-chan. Shortly afterwards they kill her in front of me. Then after that I find out that I'm the container for the Kaiubi no Kitsune and the son of the Yandame Hokage. So how do you think I feel? Shouted Naruto with his voice rising with every word he said, while tears of blood flowed freely from his eyes. Naruto I I should have told you but I was afraid and your father didn't want you to know until you were its container until you were at least a chknin. Stated the old man as he looked at Naruto while he removed his hat, showing that he had very little hair. What were you afraid that I wasn't mature enough to handle the information? Growled out Naruto while his whisker birthmarks grew thicker and darker, while a purple aura started to surround him. Naruto please you need to calm down. Said the old man as he stood up and backed away just from the killing intent that Naruto was releasing and the fact that Naruto had the Sharingan. Calm down. You want me to calm down. Especially after everything that this village has put me through. Shouted Naruto in rage while he glared at the old man. Naruto you need to calm down. Stated another voice that radiated with authority causing Naruto to physically stiffen. Slowly Naruto and the old man turned their attention to a small fox that stood in a corner of the room while it walked towards them before it jumped onto the bed and curled up into Naruto's lap. What you never seen a fox speak? Asked a fox while it looked at Naruto and the old man through the corner of its eyes. Um to be quite honest the only animals that I have ever seen speak were summons and as far as I know no one in the village has a fox summoning contract. Said the old man while he looked at the fox. Well then I guess I should at least tell you who I am. For starters I'm the Kaiubi no Kitsune. Said the fox while Naruto began to lightly pet the fox on the head. Holy shit. Was all the old man could say while he grabbed Naruto and pulled him away from the Kaiubi. Okay let me clear something up here Ninjin. I was forced into attacking the village by an Acheha. More specifically Madara Acheha. Second the reason why I'm not hightailing it out of this village is because 1. I'm still bound by the Shinigami seal, second. I'm not leaving this kid alone in a village that will attempt to kill him, and 3. I gave the boy the Sharingan, and he is going to need someone to train him in using it to its utmost potential. So I thought why not let the creator of the Sharingan teach him, and the creator is me. Stated the Kaiubi while it looked out of the window nearby. Why would you do that? Asked the old man while he watched the Kaiubi with distrust in his eyes. I just want to fix as much damage that I caused for the boy. I even plan on him signing the summoning contract for the foxes. Stated the Kaiubi while it continued to look out the window, and the old man continued to look at Kaiubi with distrust before he released a sigh. Very well then put just don't kill anyone. 
said the old man while he released Naruto who just walked back to the bed and sat down before the Kaiubi placed its head underneath Naruto's left hand. Silently Naruto just gently scratched behind the Kaiubi's ears while releasing purees of happiness. Before I forget there is one more matter that needs to be attended to. When Naruto and his friend Mutsum were captured they were tortured as you know, but during the torture they killed the girl which allowed for me to temporarily pull Naruto in his mindscape because of him being an emotional stress. While we were in the mindscape I convinced Naruto to release me which has in turn allowed for me to escape from the seal. Sadly to keep the boy alive, I had to pass the title of Kaiubi onto him. Roughly around the time he turns 18 he will have all nine tails. After that he will be required to take a test to see if he is worthy of the title. I will of course be the giver of said test, if only because I was the former Kaiubi, and if I am unable to do so one of, if any survived, my guards will give the test. Said the Kaiubi before it took a large gulp of air and released it slowly. Thank you Kaiubi san for telling me this I will be certain that no one finds out about this, and if they do they will be immediately killed along with anyone with a 5 mile radius of the speaker. Said the old man while he placed his hat back onto his head. Giji did you find Matsum's body? Asked Naruto with his now dead voice while he looked at the floor and petted the Kaiubi. Naruto when we found you, you were in an ally. We don't know who brought you there, but we feel that he or she wanted you to be found. Do you know anything about this Kaiubi-san? Asked the old man while he stood up. I'm afraid not but do not worry Naruto we will find her body. Said the Kaiubi while it placed its paws on Naruto's shirt before it began to lick the dried blood off of his face. Naruto after you leave the hospital come see me, and we can then discuss your inheritance, and I'll treat you to as much Arachiraman you want. Suggested the old man with a smile. Of course Hokage Jiji. Said Naruto with a small smile, and even though it was small the old man knew that this was a true smile, and not one of those fake ones that he placed on. I'll see you later then Naruto-kun. Said the Hokage as he left the room. Now once again Aruka, Hinata, and Sasuke found the room to change before it returned to the apartment room that Naruto lead them to. Naruto was still sitting on the bed, and the red-haired female was sitting next to him. Naruto whatever happened to Mitsumi's body? Asked Hinata already getting the feeling that this wasn't going to be an easy answer from him. We never found it. Kaiubi picked up a scent of one of her old guards. She believes that he may have taken the body, but for what reason we don't know. Simply stated Naruto while the woman just hugged him lightly. You already know who I am, but just in case you don't know I'm the former Kaiubi no Kitsune, but you can just call me Natsuki said Natsuki as she smiled at all of them. Well now that you know about me I believe that it's Hinata's turn. Said Naruto as everyone looked at her. I know what I'll show you. Stated Hinata before she started to perform hand signs and stopped on rad. Injutsu art. Memory viewing. Quickly stated Hinata before the room began to change. Slowly the room began to take on shapes until they took on specific forms. The room had changed from the apartment to a large room with tanami floors. In the center of the room stood two girls who were fighting against one another and a male that watched the fight. The first female looked to be no older than 11 maybe 12 years of age, stood for one, had midnight blue hair and pure white eyes with a lavender tint. She was wearing a black bodysuit that hugged all of her curves just right. The second female looked no older than 9 maybe 10 years of age, stood 3-4, had pure black hair that reached just past her neck, and pure white eyes. She was also wearing a black bodysuit, but it was rather loose on her. The man who watched the two fight looked to be 20 years old, stood 5'9", had black hair that reached just a few inches from his waist, and pure white eyes that seemed to radiate a coldness. He was wearing a white shirt, white pants, and a brown robe. Silently without sound the girls continued to trade blows with one another, with an occasional one striking certain points on the body, before a faint blue light also struck the same place. Every now and then the girls would part only to charge at one another again until finally one of the girls had their hand hovering over one of the few spots in the body that if struck properly, would kill an opponent. Hanabi. Hanada. That's enough. Stated the man with a stern voice that radiated power while he watched the girls turn to him. Silently the girls dropped their arms before they stepped up to the man and sat down in front of him. You both did very well, but Hanabi is still further along in the Jiken than you are Hanada. Hinata I also know that you are afraid to hurt others, and that is what is holding you back. Quickly stated the man while he looked at the girls who just nodded. Slowly the man released a sigh before he quickly preformed three hand signs. Shortly after the room glowed a faint blue before it died and disappeared. Hinata I know that you don't want to hurt others even if it was a practice bar, so I have asked Hokage-sama to sign you up for medical training at the hospital. Said the man while he looked at the eldest of the two girls. It wouldn't be that hard especially if I didn't have that seal on me whispered Hinata lightly while she glared at her right wrist. I know but you just need to hang in there for a little bit longer. Hinata I know what it feels like to be helpless. I also have a feeling that something is going to change very shortly. 
said the man before he looked at Hinata's wrist before he could see a faint blue glow coming from it. Hinata Ni Chan, why is your wrist glowing? asked Hanabi while she pulled at her sister's clothing. Looks like you were right, father, things are going to be changing. Simply stated Hinata while she closed her eyes and held her wrist over her heart, all the while having a dark grin on her face. Shortly after the room began to shift and change once more. Once again the room was nothing but shapes that were blurring too fast to catch before they began to slow down and settle into place and take on more features. Now the room was only slightly larger than Naruto's apartment room. It had a signal clothing drawer, a bed in the center of the of the room with lavender sheets on the top, and a small doll on the bed along with Hinata. The doll was of Naruto which caused him to look on in shock, Haruka with a small smile, and Sasuke with jealously. Silently they watched as Hinata pulled the Naruto doll close to her, while releasing a silent sigh. She then turned onto her side while hugging the doll even closer to her, before she sat up immediately as the sound of someone knocking her door. What? shouted Hinata while she silently hid the Naruto doll under her pillow. Nichan can I talk to you? asked a voice through the door. Oh Hinabi of course you can. Said Hinata as she got out of bed wearing a lavender kimono before she walked to the door and opened it. Are you okay Hinata? Asked Hanabi while she walked into the room and her sister closed the door behind her. I'm fine Hanabi-chan. I'm just finally free but at a cost. Stated Hinata with sadness while she held her wrist and sat with her sister on her bed. What was the cost Nichan? Asked Hanabi while she looked at her sister in concern. Well as you already know the Yautam Hokage sacrificed his life to kill the Kyubi no Kitsune, but that isn't the truth. The truth is that the Yadam Hokage sacrificed his life to seal the Kaiubi into an orphan. The Honorable Council of the famed Hyuga clan attempted to place a mind control seal on him that would be linked to me, giving me complete control over the Kaiubi Jinjiriki. Stated Hinata while she laughed lightly at the end. What happened? Asked Hanabi while she looked at her sister before she was pulled onto her lap. Well to put it simply it seems that the Kaiubi redesigned the seal to act like a marriage seal, meaning I'm legally married to Naruto. Squealed Hinata while she squeezed her sister. So when are you going to tell him, is this the reason why you like him so much, and can you not squeeze me so hard? Asked Hanabi once more while she struggled against her sister's hold. Sorry, I think I'll tell him once we are both Jenin and Hanabi, I really care for him. He is a kind person how has endured so much he is the true meaning of the will of fire. Said Hanada with a smile while she released her sister while Naruto just looked on sadly. Well then I'm happy for, but the Honorable Hyuga Council wants to see you. Said Hanabi mimicking her sister. Well they can wait said Hanada with a smile while she hugged her sister close to her, and Hanabi just laughed. So do you want to talk about something specific? Asked Hanabi as she looked at her sister who was busy running her hands through Hanabi's hair. How about I tell you about the ultimate form of our dejutsu? Suggested Hanada while she continued to run her hands through Hanabi's hair. The ultimate form? Questioned Hanabi as she looked over her shoulder. Well not that many know about it, mostly because the council doesn't want people to know, but I learned about it from mom before she passed on. The ultimate form of the Byakugan allows us to have complete mastery over out elemental affinities. Sadly the only way to unlock it is to have a pure soul, which many of our clan members seem to lack. Said Hanada while she began to braid Hanabi's hair. How did mom find out about it? Asked Hanabi while she messed around with a few of the completed braids. She unlocked it. Not knowing at the time what she had she searched the Hyuga records until she found an ancient scroll. The scroll explained how the Byakugan came into existence, but also the form she acquired. The version she unlocked never had a true name, so she called it the True Eye, Trans. Too Latin Japanese. Stated Hinata while she started to undid the braids and started over. How did the Byakugan come into existence? Asked Hanabi while she sat still. Well according to the scroll that mom found it stated that all forms of bloodlines came into existence through the help of the Nine Biju. The Nibi no Niko was stated to have created our bloodline, and for some odd reason it also mentioned that the Kaiubi no Kitsune created the Sharingan said Hanada in puzzlement before she set her sister next to her. Hanabi's hair was now set up with a bun with straight hair coming out of the center and two braids framing her face. The bun was held together with two senbon with the two glass orbs on the ends that had the kanji for fire princess. Hanada thank you. Whispered Hanabi with a smile while she hugged her sister. You're welcome Hanabi-chan. Whispered back Hanada while she hugged her sister back before the moment was ruined by someone knocking on her door. What? Hanada shouted but not before pushing her sister back. Hanada Sama, the council wishes to see you immediately. I have been ordered to bring you even if it requires force. Stated the person on the other side. Give me time to at least get dressed. Stated Hanada with irritation at having her sister time interrupted by the damn council. Very well then, Hanada Sama. Stated the person once more. Thank you. Answered back Hanada before she ran to her dresser. 
she then proceeded to open her drawers and occasionally threw an outfit to the side until she was left with one single outfit. She then ran towards the bathroom and closed the door behind her. A few moments later she stepped out wearing her outfit. Anada was now wearing a white kimono with silver lining the edges of the sleeves and the bottom of the robe. Imprinted on the kimono was large moon on the upper half, while on the lower half was a kitsune looking up to the moon. The kimono was held in place with a blood red sash. Well what do you think Kanabi chan Asked Hinata while she did a small twirl. You're going to knock those council members down a few pegs Hinata. Said Hanabi with a smile while she hugged her sister for luck. I'll see you later Hanabi chan Whispered Hinata before she walked to the door and opened it causing the room to begin to rapidly change into blurring shapes once more. Slowly the room began to settle several shapes before it finally settled down into a room larger than Hinata's and Naruto's room combined. In the room was a half-circle table that had five people seated in it. The man from the fights was sitting in the center while to his left were two elder females and to his right were two elder males. The first elder male looked to be at least 50 to 60 years old, had no hair except for an occasional thin white strand and had pure white eyes that were milked over. He was wearing a white robe with a kanji for counsel on the back. The first elder female also looked to be at least 50 to 60 years old, had hair that was extremely white held together in a bun, and her eyes were still white but held nothing but coldness, but if one were to look long enough, they would see deep kindness. She was wearing a white robe with a kanji for counsel on the back. The second elder male looked to be 70, had absolutely no hair showing that he had liver spots and had white eyes that were filled with coldness. He was wearing a white robe with the kanji for counsel on the back. The second female elder also looked to be 70 years old, had no hair, and her eyes were a pure white that were milked over. She was wearing a white robe with the kanji for counsel on the back. Currently the council was waiting silently for Hinata, and luckily they didn't have to wait long for the council chamber doors to open. With quick and equally spaced steps the person who opened the door walked into the room before she took a seat in front of all the council members. Three out of the five council members looked at her with disinterest, while two others looked at her with approval in their eyes, only being covered by a thin layer of disinterest. Anada Hayuga do you know why you have been called before the Hayuga council? Asked the oldest male member while he stared at her with minor interest. No. Was all Hinata said, but it was filled with a coldness that could only be matched by her late mother's, causing a few of the council members to sweat lightly. Very well then Hinata it has come to our attention that you may not be the best candidate to become the clan heir. Therefore you will be branded by the cage bird seal tomorrow afternoon. Stated the eldest female council member. And who might I ask gave you those orders? I thought that the clan heir wouldn't be chosen until both my sister and I became ninja. Coldly stated Hinata while her eyes were filled with a fire. That is the normal procedure, but since you will become a ninja three years sooner than your sister, the council has decided to make her clan heir. Stated the second eldest male while he looked at Hinata with hate. So you're going to betray 1000 years of our culture, all because I'm going to become a ninja sooner than my younger sister? Asked Hinata with venom dripping off of every word while a dark aura surrounded her, causing a few council members to gulp in fear. Don't think of it as betrayal of our clan ways just think of it as a precaution, so if you die and fall into enemy hands, they won't have the Byakugan. Quickly stated the eldest female council member in hopes of calming down Hinata. Oh and I guess that makes it okay for what you attempted to do to Naruto alright? Asked Hinata with a cold exterior, but inside she was bristling with rage. Listen here you little brat the Kaiubi show started the eldest male council member before he felt something strike through his heart. Slowly he looked down to see that he was bleeding, staining his robes red with his own blood, before he fell face first onto the table dead. If anyone ever speaks about my fiancé like that ever again they will get a one-way ticket to death. Got that? Asked Hinata while growling in disgust. Oh of, course, hi Hinata. Stuttered out everyone before she got up and left the room. Not long after that the room changed back into Naruto's apartment with everyone in the same position they had left it in only now there was food in front of everyone. Why don't we take a break and eat something? Suggested Naruto as he grabbed a plate of chicken. Okay. Said everyone while they each took some sort of meat and ate in silence. Five minutes later. Bang I never knew how good of a cook Naruto was until now. Thought everyone while they rubbed their stomachs in contentment. Anada what you said back in your memory was it true? Asked Naruto in doubt while he looked at the ground. Yes it was Naruto the council really did try to make it so you would only serve me, but as you can see it backfired. Stated Hinata with happiness. Thank you. Whispered Naruto with a small smile before he turned to Natsuki. Okay yes I did mess around with the seal they attempted to place on you, but can you really blame me? Asked Natsuki with a childish voice which caused Naruto to smile lightly once more. No, I can't said Naruto before he turned back to everyone else. It's your turn Sasuke. Said Hinata while she smiled at her longtime friend, even if their fathers disapproved. 
Okay. Jinjutsu art. Memory viewing. Quickly stated Sasuke while performing the hand signs before the room changed into an alleyway. The alleyway was covered in complete darkness, with only an occasional light lighting the way through the alley. Shortly after a figure could be seen walking through the alleyway beaming with happiness. The figure was a girl that stood 3-2, had black hair with blue streaks running along the edges and stopped at his neck, and black eyes. He was wearing a blue shirt with the Ichiha symbol on it, white shorts, and blue ninja sandals. I can't believe I finally did it. I finally told everyone back at school that I'm a girl, although that brings on a whole new set of problems. The positives were I got my fangirls to leave me alone, and two Naruto finally kissed me, even though it was accidental. Bad news some of my fangirls are lesbians. Stated the female as she jumped with joy and ran all the way through the alley without much thought. Silently she walked through several other alleyways before she finally stepped onto a main road and took off running. She didn't get very far before the smell of blood assaulted her nose, causing her to look at the source only to stop. Laying on the ground were two people both were elderly. Grandma Grandpa said the girl as she approached their forms and turned them over only to step back in shock. Both of their faces were horribly burned, as were the rest of the front of their bodies, there were also stab wounds on the eight vital spots for the human body, and their eyes were ripped from the sockets. No whispered Sasuke while she held her hands up to her mouth before a scream echoed through the empty street, causing her to look up in shock. At my family's house direction. Quickly stated Sasuke before she took off towards her family home. Silently she ran using all her emotions as fuel to get her home as fast as she could. Along her way she jumped and dodged other bodies of fallen police, ninja, and civilian family members, before she stopped in front of her family home. Quickly she took in a deep breath before she released it and ran inside and towards her parents' room. The second she reached her parents' room door she stopped before she kicked the door open, causing it to fly directly at a figure who had its back turned while it walked towards a female. A moment later the door slammed into the man causing him to fall to the ground. The female that was saved stood 5'2", had black hair and light black eyes that shone with happiness. She was wearing a light purple top with a white undershirt, blue pants that hugged her body, and wooden sandals. Mom whispered Sasuke in disbelief, causing her mother to look up to her. Sasuke quickly whispered her mom before she ran towards her daughter and embraced her in a hug. Mom what happened? Asked Sasuke as she detached herself from her mother. It was Itachi he went mad and started to slaughter the clan. Said her mom while she looked at the knocked out figure. No Itachi would never do that. I know he wouldn't. Said Sasuke as she pushed her mom back at arm's length. Here you don't know what Itachi can do because of your idiot of a father turning him completely emotionless. Said her mother while she bent down to her daughter's eyes and placed her right hand on her daughter's head. You're wrong. I mean you're wrong about Itachi, but oddly enough I can't say the same for dad. Said Sasuke while she looked at the down figure before she looked on in shock as the figure got up and turned towards them. The only major detail that could be seen about the man was he had two glowing blood-red eyes with a three-pronged shuriken in the center. Out of reaction Sasuke shut her eyes in hopes of blocking out the essence of fear they produced. A few seconds later she could feel something warm land on her face. Slowly she opened her eyes only to look on in shock. Standing there in front of her was her older brother with a sword sticking out of his chest. Ayatachi whispered Sasuke in shock causing her mother to turn around and also look on in shock. Not a second later Itachi pulled himself off of the sword and pulled a kuni out before he turned on his heel and stabbed it through the right eye of the figure behind him. He then proceeded to twist the kuni deeper into the eye socket before he pulled it out with the eye attached. Afterwards he jumped back while holding his wound and preformed a single hand sign before two more of him appeared. With synchronized movements all of the Itachises preformed three hand signs. Panton. Grand Fireball Jutsu. Quickly stated all of the Idichuses as three fireballs the size of a small house flew towards the unknown figure that held a hand over his missing eye, where blood could be seen flowing out. All the figure could do was cover itself as all the fireballs collided when they reached the figure, causing a semi-large explosion that shook the house. Eyes he gone? Asked Sasuke as she looked at where the figure once stood was now nothing but a crater. I didn't think so. Said Itachi as he breathed in the ash-filled air before he collapsed onto his back. Itachi? Shouted both Sasuke and his mother before they ran to his side and quickly removed his cloak and armor. As they removed each piece of clothing they were able to see that the blade had cut through Itachi's armor without any trouble. It's too late. Sasuke look after Naruto Yuzumaki. He is a key to our know your future. Mother I'm sorry I couldn't get here fast enough. Huffed out Itachi as he looked at them both. No don't be sorry you did what you could don't blame yourself if I had stood up to your father you wouldn't be like this whispered their mother before she hugged him lightly before she released him. I don't think you'll have to worry about me Itachi Nai-san. I, I already care for Naruto, but then again maybe it's love I feel for him. 
said Sasuke as she hugged her brother one last time, and he hugged her back. But in Sasuke you're strong in your own way and you were strong tonight. Said Itachi with his last breath and a smile on his face before he died. Thank you Itachi. Whispered Sasuke under her breath while she cried. Not a moment later her mother was joining her for the loss of Itachi and the rest of their clan. After that the room began to change rather quickly and once again settled back to Naruto's apartment room. That's everything I wanted to show you. Said Sasuke before she started to hear growling coming from Itsuki. Itsuki is something wrong? Asked Hinata while she placed a hand on her shoulder. I'll tell you what's wrong. The person who slaughtered you clan was also the same man to force me into attacking the village. Growled out Natsuki before she felt something soft wrap around her waist, making her feel calm and at ease. What was his name? Asked Aruka as his inquisitive side came out. His name was Madara Echeha, but his original name was Madara Hayuga. He was the first Hayuga to ever receive the cage bird seal, and because of this he sought out Kaiubi. He found her and asked her for a bloodline that could rival if not surpass the Byakugan. Said Naruto with cold hatred for the man. Then why hasn't anyone gone after him? Asked Sasuke as she stood up in defiance before they heard the door knock. I'll get it. Said Naruto as he stood up while he unwrapped his tail from around Natsuki. Calmly he approached the door and opened it with some of the locks still attached, before they could physically see him relax and open the door, completely allowing two men in. The first man stood 6'1", had a white beard on his chin, and an old face that radiated with happiness. The man was wearing a white robe with a red line running down the center of the robe, and a square hat that had a single red triangle with a white kanji for fire. The second man stood 6, had storm gray hair that stood up in spikes, a lazy posture, one black eye, while the other was covered by his height and looked to be 30 years old. He wore a long blue sleeve shirt with a patch showing a flame on his left shoulder, blue pants with a kuni and shuriken pouch on his right leg, a green jmnin vest, white medical tape wrapped around his legs, and blue ninja sandals. Okajama. Quickly stated both Sasuke and Hinata as they rose to their feet in a hurry, only to fall on top of one another. Now, now I'm only your hokage so long as I'm in my office right now, though I'm just an old man coming to check on his somewhat adoptive grandson and his genin team. Stated the hokage while he laughed at how the girls reacted. It's nice to see you again Hokage-sama. Stated Natsuki with a smile. It is always a pleasure to see you Natsuki. I take it that Naruto showed his teammates so of his past. Said the hokage with a knowing twinkle in his eyes. Yes I did Hokage Jiji I'm also planning on dropping half of my mask as well. Stated Naruto while he looked at his adoptive grandfather. Which half? Was all the Hokage asked as he looked at Naruto. The emotionless half I'll still hide the fact that I'm the new Kaiubi from the general public, but my teammates deserve to know. Was Naruto's reply while he looked at his teammates who just smiled back at him. Very well then I will now leave you in the care of your Jnin sensei Said the Hokage as he pulled out a pipe and lit it before leaving the small apartment. Well I guess I'll start. For starters my name is Kakashi Haddock, my likes are no of your concern just like my dislikes, my hobbies are well, I guess I don't have any, and my dreams for the future well you'll find out about those in later years. Said Kakashi as he I smiled at his team. So all we learned was his name. Mentally stated all the genin while they sweat dropped at the absurdity of their sensei. Okay son spot you're next. Said Kakashi while he pointed at Naruto who just growled in annoyance. Fine my name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, my likes are training and spending time with Natsuki, and hopefully with my teammates, I dislike a good portion of the village for how they treated me, my hobbies are thinking of new jutsu and ways to scare the villagers, and my dream for the future, I guess it's just to have a family. Said Naruto quietly. Okay your next midnight. Said Kakashi once more only this time he pointed at Hinata who just glared at him. Okay my name is Hinata Haikta, my likes are Naruto, spending time with Sasuke, flower pressing, cooking, and eating zenzai and cinnamon rolls. I dislike the cage bird seal and most of this village after what they did to Naruto. My hobbies are studying and practicing my family's fighting style the gentle fist and medicine. My dream for the future is well I want to keep that personal. Said Hinata while she looked at Naruto at the end with lust. Okay and now you duckhead. Said Kakashi as he pointed at Sasuke this time causing her to growl in annoyance. My name is Sasuke Chiha, my likes are Naruto, spending time with Hinata and my mom, and practicing my Tajutsu, Jinjutsu, and basic Jutsu. I dislike the person who killed my family and most of the village after seeing what they have done to Naruto. My hobbies are bettering myself so one day I can kill the man who killed my family. My dream is to one day revive my clan with the one person I care for. Said Sasuke while she blushed at the end and looked away from Naruto. Well seeing as I may end up coming on missions with you, I might as well tell you a bit about me. For starters my name is Natsuki, my likes are Dango, Naruto, and my younger sister. I dislike Madara Echeha for causing me to attack the village. 
my hobbies are reading romance novels. As for my dream well I just want to find my sister and hopefully one day have a family. Said Kaiubi while she hugged Naruto. Okay so I have two girls who are lusting after sensei's son, my sensei's son who may be emotionally broken, and a demon who is also lusting after my sensei's son. I really got the short end of the stick this time. Bakakashi while sat there debating on what to do. Good. Now then tomorrow I want all of you to meet me at training ground 7 for a survival exercise. Said Kakashi while he watched the genin's faces drop slightly. Survival exercise, but aren't we already genin? Asked Tanada in confusion while she looked at Kakashi. No you aren't in fact the academy tests were designed to weed out the weak-willed. So tomorrow you will meet me at training ground 7. Said Kakashi as he leaned against a wall while he eye smiled at them. Tomorrow is going to be fun. Thought all of the soon-to-be genin with evil little smiles on their faces causing Kakashi to physically shiver in fear. Oh and before I forget don't eat breakfast. Said Kakashi with killing intent before he attempted to get off the wall only to find himself stuck. Um Naruto why am I stuck to your wall? Asked Kakashi while he tried to push off the wall with his feet, only to have them become stuck as well. Oh that's easy all my walls are covered with non-drying glue that will only dry once contact is made with it. Although that was more of an accident. Said Naruto with a smile which caused Kakashi's eye to widen in shock, while everyone else laughed at his predicament. Naruto how exactly is this an accident? Asked Kakashi while he kept reminding himself that this was his sensei's son. Well I used to pull a lot of pranks. One day I had decided to see if I could make glue bombs. That wall is where I tested them. Said Naruto as he looked at the ceiling nearly losing himself in his memories before he was brought back to reality. Hey Naruto, Hinata, and Itsuki if you want you could come live with me and my mother in the Ichiha compound, we have more than enough rooms. Suggested Sasuke while she watched in amusement as Kakashi attempted to free himself from the wall. Sure I would actually love to get out of this dump. Stated Naruto as he watched with a smile as his sensei summoned a shadow clone to help him only to have the clone end up being stuck to the wall face first. Naruto then left the room heading towards the back of the building. And I can definitely go for getting out of the Haikta compound. Stated Hinata with a smile. Well then let's go. Said Sasuke as she walked out the door with Hinata behind her, and shortly after Naruto following after with Natsuki, in her fox form, sitting on his head. Um guys. Said Kakashi only to hear his voice echo through the house. Wait I know how I can pass the time. Said Kakashi with an eye smile while another shadow clone popped into existence. Okay get into our ninja pouch and get our Icha Icha Paradise book out. Said Kakashi while his clone nodded before he reached into the real Kakashi's ninja pouch, only to have his eyes widen in fear. Um boss it's not there. Said the clone with fear. But that can't be I know I had it. I must have started Kakashi before his lone eye widen in shock. Oh no. Whispered Kakashi while his eye widened further in shock. I left it at home. Shouted Kakashi before he screamed like a little girl, causing all of the windows to crack and his shadow clone to disappear from the sheer decibel of the scream. Well it is officially done the first chapter of Demonic Achiha is rewritten and I hope that you all enjoy it. Now then I would also like to once again take this time to the Purple Critic for allowing me to adopt the story. Demonic Achiha ch. 2. Currently Naruto, Hinata, Sasuke and Itsuki, who was resting on Naruto's head, walked away from his former apartment before they all stopped when a girly scream echoed through the afternoon sky. Calmly they all turned to one another before they shrugged their shoulders and continued further into the village. As they entered the main shopping district, both Hinata and Sasuke were greeted with the sight of nearly all the villagers glaring at Naruto and Natsuki. Only a few nodded to Naruto, while others just plain outright ignored them. Though despite all the glares Naruto just brushed them off as if they were nothing more than Aneshans, while Hinata and Sasuke were trying their damn best to not kill half of the village. Luckily for the villagers it didn't take too long for the group of genin to reach the Ichiha district, seeing as Naruto knew all the back allies and side roads like the back of his hand. The only odd thing was the fact that Naruto was able to navigate through the Ichiha clan district and straight toward Sasuke's home. Naruto how did you exactly know where I lived? Asked Sasuke as she looked at Naruto with murder shining in her eyes, and she looked at Akuni like it was one of her friends. Um one your scent leads from certain areas to here. Two who do you think died Itachi's Anbu armor pink for that whole week? Stated Naruto while he backed away from the possible murderous, psychopathic, hormone-driven teenager. Oh so you spy on me while I'm at the onsen. Said Sasuke while the glint in her eyes became slightly brighter and flames could be seen burning behind her. Nnn no, th that's Kai Kiba. I I I it's you just th that your scent I I is you uni unique. Stuttered out Naruto while he reverted to his jibe fox form, which turned out to be either the best worst decision of his lifetime. How exactly is my scent unique? Asked Sasuke while her rage resided and was replaced with the urge to hug Naruto. 
Um well you have the faint smell of amyasupi with a kaka and tomatoes, but your true scent is of early morning dew and freshly cut grass. Stated Naruto while he laid on the ground with his eyes covered by his front paws and shook bracing himself from the pain that would come. Naruto I'm not angry I was only messing around with you. I will also admit it was funny watching Itachi Nai having to wear pink anbu armor for that week. Said Sasuke while Naruto looked at her returning to his human form. Now come on. We still have to let my mother know that you two will now be living with us. Said Sasuke as she grabbed Naruto and Hinata and literally dragged them into the house. After stepping into the house Sasuke let them go while she removed her sandals while Naruto and Hinata did the same. Mom I'm home and I brought guests shouted Sasuke while Natsuki also walked into the house before she reverted to her human form. I'm in the kitchen. Was the reply they received before they followed Sasuke into the kitchen where a woman was busy cooking. The kitchen itself was more of a combination of dining room and kitchen. The left side of the room was the kitchen and was limited in size and equipment, but even still it served its purpose for the small family. Overall it had at least 12 cabinets, a stove, sink, and work area to prepare the food. The right side of the room was a small table that would fit a family of at least six without difficulty. On the walls were several scrolls with kanji on them. Overall the room had a comfortable atmosphere. The woman though looked to be 37 years old, had cold black eyes, black hair with a bluish tint that reached to the middle of her back, and stood 5'3". She was wearing a blue shirt with a typical Ichiha symbol on the back, a blue skirt that reached to her knees, and a white apron. So Saz chan who did you bring home? Asked a woman as she turned around to see Hinata, Natsuki, and Naruto. Slowly her eyes widened before she had a grin pull at her lips. She then walked up to Naruto before she bent down to where she was staring into his eyes. Hello Naruto. How have you been? Asked Sasuke's mom as she rubbed the top of his head while his face and body seemed to relax under. I've been doing well Makoto. Although I wish Itachi was still around for me to pull pranks on. Said Naruto while Makoto let out a small laugh before she stopped rubbing his head. I know and I still remember some of the pranks you did to him. Why don't you tell some of them while I finish up dinner? Suggested Makoto while Naruto smiled before Sasuke, Hinata, Natsuki, and Naruto sat at the table. Well let's see here what pranks did I pull on Itachi. I remember changing his pokey with cinnamon sticks and the other time where I buried his whole entire pocky supply in training ground 44. Said Naruto with a smile as he remembered some of his past. I remember those. Itachi was swearing up a storm for days while muttering about trying to get you back. Although if I remember correctly he was never able to do so, since whenever he tried the plan would backfire on him. Said Mikoto while everyone laughed at Itachi's expense. I remember that the last thing he ever tried was to coat me in glue and feathers, place a rubber glove on my head, and finished it off with me getting transported into the council chambers via seal. Man that was probably the best time of my life having a pranking war against the most studic Achea. Said Naruto while everyone had the image of a chicken Itachi hanging upside down in the council chambers, causing everyone to break out in laughter. In heaven after life whatever you want to call it. Currently Itachi was doing one of the most dangerous sports that can ever be performed in the afterlife, peeking in on the private bathhouse of the gods. All of a sudden though Itachi started to feel a sneeze coming on, and despite his best efforts, he was unable to hold it in before it was released, causing nearly every single scantily clothed god to chase him around the holy plain screaming, kill the pervert. Back with the gang. I believe that after that attempt he was forced to admit surrender to me. Since the Achiha took that as a great blow to their respect, especially since the so-called genius got outwitted by a boy no older than five. Said Naruto while Makoto set a plate of amyasubi with a kaka and tomatoes in front of Sasuke, Zen's eye in front of Hinata, a rather large bowl of ramen in front of Naruto, a plate of dango in front of Natsuki, and another plate of dango in her seat. Mom before we begin would it be alright if Hinata, Natsuki, and Naruto moved in with us? Asked Sasuke as she looked at her mother with the puppy dog eyes. Here you're a couple years too young to have the puppy dog pout work on me, but I don't see why not. I also want to know why. Said Mikoto as she laughed at her daughter who pouted. If you must know it is because they are my teammates and quite honestly have you seen the place that Naruto lives in. Said Sasuke while her voice rose to a shout at the end while her mother flinched at that. No I haven't and something tells me that I don't want to know. Now I don't know about you, but I think it would be best if we eat now. Said Mikoto while everyone nodded in agreement. I did Akamasu. Everyone whispered under their breath before they started to eat opting to save the conversations until everyone was done eating. Unluckily for the group they got to witness where Naruto got his table manners. Both Natsuki and Naruto were shoveling the food into their mouths at a pace that quickly made everyone look on at disgust, horror, and for some odd reason fascination. 
Quickly the other three shared a look before they just shrugged their shoulders, thinking the same exact thing, if you can't beat them join them immediately after they too were shoveling the food into their mouth and finished just a few seconds after Natsuki and Naruto, although they were breathing heavily. Am huff huff how can you eat that fast huffed out Sasuke, well she placed a hand over her heavily beating heart. Had to get used to it. With me being the ultimate evil I literally had to eat extremely fast or else get dragged away from my food before I was halfway done and would be beaten. After the beating I would told that I don't deserve food or to even live for that matter. Luckily the Ichiraku Raymond stand was willing to allow me to eat there. Hell they even helped me hide from mobs and even attempted to adopt me on several occasions. Said Naruto as he allowed himself to remember his almost adoptive family. Why weren't you ever adopted? Asked Hanada while she began to take a random guess as to who was behind it. Old man Tucci every time he would go to get the adoption forms the orphanage would increase their prices. If he went to the Hokage some random council member would come in say something like, Hokage Sama I'm afraid that the council had made an error in the paperwork that was needed to be signed today, before he would grab it along with the adoption papers and destroy them. It was either that or the Hokage's secretary wouldn't allow him past and even threatened him by calling Anbu. Said Naruto with rage as his eyes flashed a deep violet before he released a breath and calmed down while his eyes returned to their natural blue color. Those self-arrogant pigs. Shouted Mikoto as her eyes immediately flashed from their coal black to the Sharingan red before they returned to normal. Mother. Shouted Sasuke with shock at what her mother said. Sorry dear it's just this is the third time they have ruined Naruto-kun's life. Said Mikoto with anger clearly burning in her eyes while she picked up the dirty dishes off the table and carried them over to the sink. She then proceeded to drop them in while releasing a large sigh. What do you mean that was the third time that they have ruined my life? Asked Naruto with a menacing glare directed at Makoto causing her to squirm. The first time that they officially ruined your life was when they told your mother that you had died along with your father. During that time though Saratobi was too busy protecting you from assassins that wanted you dead because of what you formerly contained, so he never officially found out until a fake letter. I even have the false letter that they wrote, with the help of my husband, that they gave to him. He was of course smart enough to ask me to come in and check to see if it really was Kashina-chan's head writing. I knew Kashina better she wouldn't abandon her own flesh and blood and noticed several differences in between her handwriting and the notes. I immediately pointed them out and told Siratobi what my husband did. He was one of the major ones behind your mother's leaving. I have been in constant contact with your mother Naruto and I can already tell you this much she isn't very happy with Kanoha's honorable counsel. It took nearly a whole month just to keep her from coming back and killing the council and I even made her a promise that Itachi would watch over you and keep you safe. The second after you got your first C rank mission, I'm also going to send a message to her so she can meet you in person. Stated Mikoto while she watched Naruto's emotions change from anger to happiness to fear and finally rage while he released a concentrated form of killing intent that actually took a form of a fox standing behind him with its fangs bared. Calm yourself Naruto. Besides if you kill the council members we would miss their faces when we bring your mother back. Just imagine it with her back, not only would you get a form of revenge against those fools on the council, but you will truly have a piece of your family back. Plus if we're lucky we'll get to see her kill a few of the more problematic ones. Said Natsuki as she lightly rubbed his back calming him down enough to where the killing intent had dissipated. You're right Natsuki. Mikoto can you at least tell me how you have been keeping in contact with my mother? Asked Naruto with his voice filled with hidden glee, while Natsuki continued to rub his back before Sasuke and Hinata joined in causing him to fall further in relaxation. We have a special summon that we can call out. Although what it is I can't tell you until you meet your since it is in Yuzumaki clan summoning scroll. I was given special permission from the head summon since Kashina and I plan to have her firstborn marry my secondborn. Stated Mikoto with a smile and mild blush, completely ignoring Naruto's extremely pale face and Natsuki's, Hinata's, and Sasuke's looks of jealousy. He's mine all the girls shouted while they tugged him closer to each of them, causing Mikoto to snap out of her mental dreams. I've been placed into a clan marriage with him. Shouted Sasuke as she pulled Naruto to her while she gave him a light kiss on the check, causing him to turn a light red color. So what I've been bound to him ever since the idiots on my family council branded us together and thanks to Kai Ubi's intervention, turned it into a marriage seal. Don't forget I've also been the only one to really love him. Shouted Hinata as she pulled Naruto close to her so his head was resting on her chest, causing him to turn a deeper red before it turned slightly deeper as Hinata began to lightly run her hand through his hair. Well guess what you two since the Shinigami seal binds me to Naruto-kun. So I outrank the both of you especially since I've been with him his entire life, besides you never took the chance to approach him and ask him out, along with the fact that there is an old demon law that states that the old Kaiubi is required to marry the next Kaiubi. 
shouted out Natsuki as she pulled Naruto out of Hinata's grip before she places a kiss on his lips while she lightly rubbed his whisker marks. Shortly after she released him before she lightly began to lick his cheek causing him to squirm. Slowly cold hard hatred boiled beneath both Hinata and Sasuke's skin before they shared a look before they jumped at Natsuki and began to fight while tossing Naruto out of the scuffle. Naruto and Makoto of course just stared on in wonder while Hinata and Sasuke took on the Kaiubi in her human form. Ichiha, Sasuke, Hayuga, Hinata and Yoko Natsuki stopped fighting this instant. Shouted Makoto causing the girls to stop in a rather interesting position. Currently Natsuki was laying on her back with Hinata in a chokehold, while Sasuke was behind her with her legs wrapped around Natsuki's neck, while her face was locked in a chokehold as well only with Hinata's legs. Of course shortly after all of them fell into a pile on top of one another. Hinata and Sasuke you both are clan heirs, so I suggest you start acting like, and as for you Natsuki you are a demon queen. Such squabbles like these are not appropriate for you to participate in. If anything you should know Kanoha clan's laws well enough to realize that Naruto falls under the clan restoration act, meaning he can have more than one wife. Stated Mikoto while the girls looked at the ground in shame. Naruto on the other hand was doing his best to wrap around his mind that he would eventually have to marry more than one woman. Um Mikoto-san if you don't mind could you please show me to my room. Said Naruto who was so pale that it would have Orochimaru green with envy. Of course Naruto and don't think you three are getting out of this scotch free either. When I get back I want this kitchen spotless. Stated Mikoto as she turned back to the three lightly sighing teens before they were standing stiff as boards shaking in fear from the killing intent being released. Yes ma'am. Quickly answered all the girls so they wouldn't have to face Mikoto's wrath. Good. Now come along Naruto. Said Mikoto with a smile while she lead Naruto out of the room. Only one thought went through everyone's head, never piss off Makoto Ichiha, ever silently Naruto followed Makoto through the main house, before they stopped in front of a door, before Makoto opened it up and walked in with Naruto following after. The room itself was a comfortable size being only 8x8 room with the ceiling stretching 9 feet into the air. The wall in front of him had a sliding door that led out to a small meditation area, where several sakura trees grew surrounding a small pond that had several koi fish swimming lazily with much care. The left wall was covered in bookshelves that were filled to the brim with books on cooking, forging, fuin, nin.gentai, and kenjutsu scrolls covered the shelves, along with a rather impressive layer of dust. Along the wall behind him were a few dressers that had a few photo frames on them that were covered in dust, while a futon lay in between the two. Finally the right wall had a single door that undoubtedly lead to his personal bathroom while on the wall were two scrolls with the word tiger on the first, while on the second was the word hunter. Slowly Naruto walked over to the dresser before he picked up one of the photo frames before he wiped off the dust. After wiping the dust off a pair of violet eyes stared back at his own sapphire blue ones. Immediately after he dropped the picture in shock while he backed up slightly. Naruto are you alright? Asked Mikoto as watched Naruto. Yeah, I'm fine. It must have been a trick of the moon's light. Said Naruto as he retrieved the picture and actually looked at it. In the picture were two people the first was a male that stood 5'8", looked to be about 20 years old, had golden blonde hair that reached to his neck, while two bangs framed his face, and sapphire blue eyes. He was wearing a dark blue long sleeve shirt that had a red spiral on each shoulder, dark blue pants, and blue ninja sandals. Standing next to him was a woman who stood 5'4", looked to be at least 20 years old, had fire red hair that reached to her waist, and violet eyes. She was wearing a light blue sleeveless shirt, blue pants, and blue ninja sandals. Currently the man had his left arm wrapped lightly around the woman's shoulder while she leaned into him cradling her stomach. Both of them had bright smiles on for the photo, but even still Naruto could tell that those were their true smiles. Makoto san can you please leave me be for the rest of the night and tell the rest of the girls that I don't want to be disturbed. Asked Naruto as he reset the picture on the dresser before turning to face Makoto only to see that she was gone. Slowly he turned back to the picture with only one thought on his mind. I have to get a seer rank and fast. Thought Naruto while he pulled out one of his sealing scrolls before he had to cover his nose. But a shower first. Said Naruto as he grabbed his scroll that contained his clothes and entered the bathroom. But the girls. Currently all the girls were busy rinsing, washing, and drying all the dishes used after they had finished cleaning the table and wiped it down. Man I can't believe that we just got into an argument over a guy. Stated Sasuke as she rinsed off the dishes before she passed them on to Hinata. I know I never thought there would be a day that it would happen. Why don't we make a promise to one another? No matter who Naruto chooses and who gets to claim him first in bed that we'll still be friends. Said Hinata to Sasuke who started to ponder over it before she nodded her head in a positive manner. It seems that you forgot something though. Naruto needs to marry at least four women or else the honorable council of Konoha will choose his wives. I can already tell you they will choose girls that are under their control like that Waruno bitch to marry him. 
I can already tell you this much Naruto has had his eyes on the both of you ever since the first day of the academy. So don't be too surprised if he chooses one if not both of you to be one of his wives. Said Natsuki while she spit the word honorable out with so much venom that it nearly melted through the pan she was drying. What do you mean he has had his eyes on the two of us since the first day at the academy? Asked Hanada as she looked at Natsuki out of the corner of her eye. On the first day of school you two were the only ones to ever approach him and talk to him. Hinata you offered him some of your own lunch during lunch, and Sasuke you were willing to push him to do better than his own limitations. Plus he also knew that you were girl helps. Said Natsuki with a smirk on her face while Sasuke's mouth hung open lightly. Oh how die did he know? Asked Sasuke as she paused in her work. It's your smell. All females, including demon women, constantly release pheromones once they hit puberty. The only difference in between male pheromones and female pheromones is their scent and the time that they are released. During a female's period or heat, as we demons call it, we are constantly releasing pheromones to attract a strong male. Once a male usually smells the pheromones they will begin to release their own in attempts to beckon the female to mate with them. Although the release of a male's pheromones is completely psychological, so to put it in simpler terms, a male's mind releases them upon smelling a female in heat. At the first day of school Sasuke you were going through your first period and were unknowingly releasing pheromones, and Naruto caught a whiff. Luckily for you I had trained Naruto enough by then to the point that I can even release a minuscule amount of my own pheromones, if I hadn't well, let's just say you wouldn't be human, and Aruka would have been nearly cleaved in half for trying to stop Naruto. Said Natsuki while both Hinata and Sasuke blushed a deep crimson, causing Natsuki to laugh lightly, while Makoto walked back into the room. You know I could have sworn that when I left I told you three that I wanted this room to be spotless. Said Makoto with her voice filled with anger causing all three girls to freeze and turn around slowly, so they were facing Makoto. Silently Makoto continued to glare at the three of them, causing them to squirm underneath her gaze. Go get some sleep I'll take care of whatever remains. Said Makoto as she released a sigh while the girls quickly disappeared. After they had disappeared did Makoto look over what they had done only to see stacks of completely clean dishes standing at attention. I guess they did an okay job. Thought Makoto as she started to place away the dishes before she stopped and did a double take at the pan she was holding. Right dead center in the pan was a hole. Faintly Makoto could feel her eye begin to twitch before she sighed and tossed it out the window and heard a clang while she smirked. That'll teach that little pervert and if it doesn't started thinking Makoto while dark evil things began to float into her mind along with a dark low chuckle from deep within her mind. But Naruto. Calmly Naruto walked out of the bathroom wearing a simple light blue kimono on before he walked out to the small garden. He then released a sigh while he looked up into the night sky and stared at the moon, before he sat in a meditation position and closed his eyes, allowing the moon's light to cover him. What am I going to do? I already know that I fall under the clan restoration law, meaning I can have several wives if I wished it. I know that I'll need at least four unless I want the council to pick them, and that is a disaster waiting to happen. I also know I have feelings for both Hinata and Sasuke, but I don't know if it's love it may just be a simple crush, but they also understand me. Hinata had a seal placed on her without her choice just like me, and Sasuke has lost just about everything except for her mother, plus we are the last of our clans. Then there's Natsuki she is a demon queen who has fallen for me, even if she tries to hide it, but I can clearly see it in her eyes. I just don't know. Am I not making a move because I'm afraid to lose everything again, is it because somewhere in my heart I know that Mitsumi is still alive, or is it because I'm worried about what Mitsumi would think of me? God this is so frustrating and troublesome. Thought Naruto as he evened out his breath. Plus today was taxing on my mind too. Showing one of my worst memories to not only my teammates, Iruka, and myself has taken its toll, but even still I feel as if I'm forgetting to do something. Thought Naruto once more before he reopened his eyes and stretched. Back at Naruto's old home. Currently Kakashi was still stuck to the wall breathing heavily since he screamed his throat raw, hoping to attract someone to help him. Although it seems that Kami had some form of grudge against him since no one ever entered after his team left. Slowly a sigh left his lips before he heard the sound of a floorboard squeaking. Acting quickly Kakashi attempted to grab a kunai only to curse under his breath as he remembered that he was stuck to a wall. Instead he quickly scanned the room and couldn't notice anything different and allowed his body to relax before he heard it again only from his left. Quickly Kakashi turned towards the noise only to catch sight of a piece of clothing as it disappeared. Ninjutsu. Thought Kakashi as he allowed for his mind to calm down and felt for his chakra. The second he was able to feel his chakra he immediately released a small, short concentrated burst, causing the room to weaver slightly before it shattered revealing woman standing before Kakashi. The female standing before him stood 5'10", looked to be at least 30 years old, had short dark brown hair, light brown eyes, and wore her headband around her forehead. 
she was currently wearing a light earth brown kimono top that hugged her body, lightly showing that she was at least a C-cup black ninja pants with a kunai and shuriken holder on her left leg, and black ninja sandals. On her cheeks she had purple triangles that faced down wards similar to fangs and large canines. Im impossible Rin. Asked Kakashi in shock while he rapidly blinked his eyes thinking that it wasn't real. Hello Kakashi. Said Rin as she approached him before she lightly placed her hand on the side of his face. But you're dead I, I saw you die. Shouted Kakashi in hysteria while tears freely fell from his single eye. Kakashi so long as I love you I'll cheat death to be with you. Said Rin lightly while she began to pull down his face mask so that his lower portion of his face was revealed along with his collarbone. Genkai by Zatsuki my Tenshi. Whispered Rin while her canines lengthened while she kissed Kakashi on the lips before she transferred her mouth over his collarbone. Not wasting a single second she swiftly bit down while she transferred chakra into the wound. After a few seconds she removed her mouth with a thin line of saliva, linking her bite to her mouth, before she replaced Kakashi's face mask. We'll be together soon my love. Whispered Rin while she smiled softly at Kakashi's peaceful expression before she disappeared in a whirlwind of leaves and Kakashi fell to the floor still dead asleep. Back with Naruto. Well nothing is coming to mind so it must have been my imagination. Said Naruto as he re-entered the room and took notice of Natsuki already laying in bed asleep. Some things never change. Thought Naruto with a small smile before he also got into bed. The second he was in bed Natsuki immediately snuggled up close to him allowing for his head to rest on her chest. Good night Natsuki-chan. Whispered Naruto as he fell into a deep and dreamless sleep. The next day. With painfully slow movements the sun ascended into the early morning sky, allowing for it to shine onto the world, or more precisely directly onto one person's face. Slowly the person groaned in complaint before he turned and pressed his face further into his pillow, causing it to giggle lightly. Wait a second pillows don't giggle. Thought Naruto as he reluctantly opened his eyes only to have to shut them before he squinted and made out a shadow hanging over him. Ugh Natsuki what are you doing? Asked Naruto as he rubbed the sleep out of his eyes and tried to get up only to be pushed down lightly by the figure over him. SHH go back to sleep Naruto-kun. Lightly whispered a voice right next to him causing his eyes to widen in horror. Acting on impulse Naruto immediately pulled a kunai out from his kimono and make a quick swipe for the figure's throat only to have it disappear. Ugh Naruto. Wind out Natsuki as she looked at him only to see him in minor shock. Naruto. Asked Natsuki in worry causing Naruto to look at her. Don't worry it was nothing. It was possibly a ghost from my mind. Said Naruto while he replaced the kunai into his kimono before he stood up. The ghost from your mind? Questioned Natsuki as she lazily sat up allowing the blanket that covered them to fall to the ground, showing once again that she wasn't wearing any clothes. Yeah. It was a shadowed figure. Maybe it was a remnant of an attack I suffered that I mentally buried into my subconscious and that yesterday's revelation of my past dug it up. My mind might have then recreated what I last saw as an illusion. Now can you please put some clothes on? Asked Naruto at the end while he grabbed his clothes and headed off towards the bathroom with Natsuki following after. Naruto you know that clothing is uncomfortable against my skin. Besides no one can say anything so long as I'm not out in public like this. Retorted Natsuki while she locked the bathroom door behind her and looked around. The bathroom was relatively modest being only three quarters of the size of the bedroom next door. Along the left wall were two sinks with cabinets underneath them, a medicine cabinet above them, and enough room in between the two sinks for all the basic healthcare necessities. The right wall had two short wooden walls that were an even three feet apart from one another and held two showers and a single toilet. Along the south wall were several cabinets that contained only Kami knows what. In the center of the room was a large square indent in the stone that held spring water. Surrounding the small spring were several seals that ran along the spring's edge. Even from the distance that they stood Natsuki was able to tell that most of the seals were designed to clean the spring after every use, control the temperature of the water, regulate how quickly the water heated, keep the water at a constant level, so it would never overflow or be underfilled, and a few contained wash clothes along with some soap. It makes no difference especially with perverts like Kiba and old man Hokage out there. Said Naruto while he removed his kimono while he walked over to the spring and tapped a few of the seals, causing them to glow a faint blue. Not a moment later the spring slowly began to heat up, while steam gently rose up from the surface, just as Naruto stepped in. He then proceeded to walk towards the farther end before he slowly relaxed into the water and sat on a stone outcropping that was under the water and allowing the water to rise up to his chest. Slowly he closed his eyes before he opened them a bit only to see Natsuki still standing in the same place. Are you going to join me or stand there all day like a fish out of water? Asked Naruto which caused Natsuki to turn her attention towards Naruto. Slowly a grin spread across her face, causing Naruto to look at her questioningly, only to brush it off as a girl thing. Of course I'll be joining you. 
besides I can't have you drown yourself. Said Natsuki with a smirk while Naruto just shook his head at her lame joke. Ugh women. Whispered Naruto while Natsuki joined him in the spring and hit him for his earlier comment. She then proceeded to sit beside him while she relaxed into the water and released a groan of contentment as the warm water loosened up her muscles. Natsuki can you train Sasuke in how to properly use the Sharingan? Asked Naruto while he relaxed allowing the water to work its magic and loosening up his muscles. I don't see why not, but she won't be able to use it to the full potential unless she's a Hanyu or a full demon. Stated Natsuki while Naruto nodded in response before he placed his hands over a seal. He then channeled a small amount of chakra into the seal before a rag and a bar of soap popped out. I know and since she isn't a demon, she won't be able to use the true Manjiku Sharingan to the true potential without going blind. Said Naruto while he lightly wetted the soap before he lightly rubbed the soap into the towel. But you could change that. Retorted Natsuki while she grabbed the soap-covered towel before she turned Naruto round and began to wash his back. I know but what if she doesn't like being a demon? Once you become one or a mate to one there is no turning back. Said Naruto while Natsuki continued to wash his back and occasionally added in a light tap on some of his muscles, allowing them to unknot themselves. Naruto if you're so worried about her decision why not ask her and explain the positives and negatives of becoming a demon to her and Hinata. That way they understand what they are getting into. Said Natsuki as she finished washing his back before she turned him around, handed him the cloth, and turned around herself. Very well you hold two valuable points and I'll talk to them about it later today. If they agree I'll mark them if not I'll just let them live out their lives naturally. Said Naruto while he washed Natsuki's back and occasionally struck a muscle knot, similar to how Natsuki did to him to loosen it and lightly rub it away. Good. I also suggest testing their elemental affinity since I have this feeling in my gut that Kakashi won't train all of you evenly. If anything he may show favoritism to you and Sasuke since you two are related to someone from his past. Said Natsuki as she relaxed even further into Naruto as he finished washing her back. Silently they sat there content with one another before a knock on the bathroom door ruined the moment. Humming. Shouted Tsukune as he removed Natsuki from him and set her down next to him before he got up. He then proceeded to walk towards the door while he replaced the kimono that he was wearing earlier back on and wrapped it around his body like a robe. After making certain that it wouldn't fall off his body he unlocked the door. Standing on the other side of the door were both Sasuke and Hinata wearing kimonos while holding a towel in their arms. Hinata's kimono was a light purple color with a white moon on the center. Sitting inside the moon was the image of a wolf with red tattoos, covering its left side of its face, while a single tail wrapped around the base of the moon. Surrounding the moon were several kanji that mentioned all the demon clans and summoning clans. Sasuke's kimono was a dark blue color with a black sun on the front, while the Ichiha symbol was imprinted on the back. Encircling the moon was a black dragon that was eating its own tail as it guarded the moon. Written into the dragon's skin was the kanji for life, death, and slumber. Sasuke, Hinata how may I help you? Asked Naruto while the girl silently looked away with blushes adorning their faces. We were kind of wondering if you would um allow us to join you in cleaning up. Said Sasuke while both Hinata's and her blush grew a little darker and Naruto had a blush adorning his face. Thus started Naruto before Natsuki appeared behind. Of course you can join us. Besides Naruto has a question for the both of you. Said Natsuki with a minor smile while she pulled Naruto out of the doorway and grabbed both girls before pulling them in as well. Shortly after the door was shut and locked once more only this time it also had a demon seal on the door, so it could only be opened from the outside. Not even a moment after sealing the door Natsuki immediately stripped Naruto of his kimono before she dragged Naruto with her towards the spring and tossed him in. She then proceeded to follow after while Naruto resurfaced with his hair hanging in his face. After getting in she grabbed Naruto by his hair and dragged him over to the ledge he occupied earlier before sitting him down there and sitting next to him while resting her head against his shoulder. Lazily Natsuki opened her eyes and looked over to the girls who were doing their best to hide their blushes. Don't just stand there. Either you can get in willingly or I'll do the same thing that I did to Naruto to the two of you. Said Natsuki with irritancy causing the two to look on in minor shock. Acting quickly unless they wanted the wrath of Natsuki after them, they quickly stripped of their kimonos and allowed for them to pull on the ground around them. Naruto of course had a much deeper blush on his face before he looked into the water while the girls covered their bodies with their arms and walked into the spring and sat close to Naruto but still kept a fair distance away from him. So Naruto what did you want to talk to us about? Asked Hinata as she looked away from Naruto with a blush still adorning her face. Yeah I do. All I ask is that you let me explain everything before you make any protests or ask any questions. Asked Naruto while he looked at the girls after finally getting his blush under control. Of course. You have our word as ninja and clan heirs. Said both girls while the motion for him to begin. 
I was wondering if you would consider becoming Hanyus. I can already tell you that this would have several benefits for the both of you. Becoming a Hanyu will give you extra flexibility, larger chakra pools, demonic chakra, increased life, and you wouldn't be able to age after reaching 20. The bad things are for starters you would be considered an outcast in both the human world and the demon world, the extreme love of killing and spilling blood, and heat. Sasuke there is an extra positive for this though. If you were to ever be able to achieve the Manjikyu Sharingan it would deteriorate until you were left blind, but if you became a half-demon the Manjikyu would never deteriorate. This may also have an effect on you Hinata for all I know, and what Natsuki knows the extra demonic chakra may increase the power of your Byakugan and the ultimate form as well to an unknown degree. Said Naruto as he took a minor breather while the two girls looked at one another. Naruto if you turn us into Hanyuses will we get extra features and will this officially consider us mates in demonic terms? Asked Sasuke while curiosity and Hinata nodding in agreement. Well to answer your first question yes you will gain fox ears, tails, and claws. The demonic chakra may also slightly enhance your metabolism, which would cause you to grow slightly. As for your second question yes you will be considered mates in demonic terms, but you won't be officially recognized as mates until you each birth a child. Said Natsuki calmly since she had been prepared by her mother to officially take on a mate at some point in her life. We agree. Stated both the girls after a few moments causing Naruto to look at them in confusion and shock. What? Shouted Naruto while the girls giggled at his antics. We said that we agree. We see nothing wrong with what you're saying besides all the positives outweigh the negatives. Sure will be considered outcasts, but then isn't everyone considered an outcast? Stated the girls without any hesitation while wearing grins of happiness. I guess you're right but you won't become Hanyuses you'll become full-blooded demons. Meaning certain emotions will be far easier to trigger such as anger, jealousy, lust, envy, and pride, but if this is what you want I won't argue. I already know that I'll lose. Said Naruto with a small smile on his face which caused everyone to break out with a smile of their own. So how exactly will we be changed? Asked Sasuke while Hinata also paid very close attention to what was to be mentioned. Becoming a Hanyu is different from becoming a demon. To become a Hanyu a demon's blood needs to be injected directly into the bloodstream of a human. The only way to turn a human into a demon is to have them drink the blood of a demon, and then they have to be marked by the same demon. Said Naruto without hesitation while the girls turned slightly pale but swallowed their disgust and fear. I'll go first. Offered up Hinata as she stood up allowing for the water that hung on her body float down. She then walked over to Naruto before she sat on his lap and held his head in her hands and stared into his endless sapphire blue eyes. Swallowing heavily Naruto lightly cupped Hinata's face in his own hands before he pulled her face closer to his. Quickly stealing his resolve Naruto bit down on his tongue hard enough for blood to be drawn before he allowed for it to pool in his mouth. Once he had enough he quickly kissed Hinata on the lips while he gently coaxed her into opening her mouth. Luckily he didn't need to wait long before Hinata lightly moaned into the kiss, opening her mouth wide enough for Naruto to slip his tongue into her mouth and allow for blood to flow along his tongue into Hinata's mouth. Shortly after all the blood was either in Hinata's mouth or in her throat as Naruto released her from the kiss with only a thin string of blood-colored saliva connecting them before he gently pushed Hinata's head back, exposing her neck to him. Acting quickly Naruto lightly kissed Hinata on the neck while feeling her pulse increase before he swiftly bit down and channeled chakra into the bit while drinking a small amount of her blood. After a couple of seconds he gently released her before he set her down next to him and backed away. Silently everyone waited for a few moments before Hinata's chakra began to swirl around her and changed from its dull light blue into a vibrant white with blue streaks. Not a moment later the chakra completely consumed her as it flared before it died a few seconds later. Now standing in front of the small group was a female stood 4'3", looked to be still 12 years old, had midnight blue hair with a few streaks of pure white and ocean blue mixed in, and white pupilless eyes. She was of course still naked, showing that her bosom size was at least a C cup, her skin was a nearly transparent white, and her hips were a medium size. Sitting atop her head were a pair of fox ears that matched the same color scheme of her hair, while lazily floating in the water beside her was a single fox tail that was a midnight blue, while the tip was a pure white with a second tip being a light blue. Her hands no longer had nails but rather short claws, and they also assumed that it was the same for her feet as well. Imprinted on her neck was a symbol of a golden yellow nine-tailed fox, with its tails wrapping around her neck. Slowly Hinata released a low groan as she slowly stood up before she swayed on her feet and sat back down before she looked around her, and her eyes landed on Naruto. How do you feel Hinata? Asked Naruto with concern. I feel fine but this headache is annoying. Wind out Hinata as she rubbed her head and coincidentally her new ears causing her to get lost in own form of pleasure. The headache is understandable since it's your mind getting used to the new advanced hearing, smell, taste, sight, and feeling. 
chuckled out Naruto while he gently grabbed Hinata's hands and placed them at her side. I'm also going to tell you this now your chakra control has shot itself straight to hell. You will have to redo all the chakra control exercises you have learned and do them for at least 6 months if you want to be able to control your chakra to the same degree that you were able to do when you were human. Said Naruto once more as he let Hinata go while she pouted at the thought of redoing all her chakra control exercises. Sasuke, are you ready? Asked Naruto as he turned towards her. Yeah. Stated Sasuke with determination as she scooted closer to Naruto and took his face into her own hands, and Naruto in turn cupped her own face. Acting on impulse Sasuke immediately crashed her own lips onto Naruto's, causing him to open his own eyes in shock before both their bodies relaxed into the kiss. Hesitantly Sasuke ran her tongue along the bottom of Naruto's lip, causing him to moan lightly and granting Sasuke access. With sloppy movement Sasuke allowed for her tongue to explore Naruto's mouth before she gently coxed him into her own mouth and allowed for him to explore. Just as he was about to pull out Sasuke bit down onto his tongue, causing it to bleed into her and coat not only her mouth, but Naruto's tongue as well. After she felt she had a significant amount of Naruto's blood, she released him with only a thin string of bloody saliva linking them. Not a second after she released him Naruto had immediately started to assault her bare neck with light passes of his tongue before he lingered on a pulse point and bit down and channeled his demonic chakra into her while drinking a small amount of her blood. Shortly after he gently released her before she was consumed in a deep blue flame with small red spots mixed in before it died down. Now standing before the group was a young female that was also no older than 12 years of age, had black hair with blue streaks running through it that reached to her mid-back and red tips, her eyes were coal black with a thin almost transparent red streak running through the center, and she stood 4'5". And she was also slightly more built with her muscle showing giving her an athletic build. She was of course wearing nothing so everyone was able to tell she had at least a C cup if not nearly a D cup bust and wide hips. Sitting atop her head were a pair of fox ears that were slightly dark blue with red tips that matched her hair, floating behind her was a similar dark blue tail with a red tip, and her hands no longer had nails, but claws that only extended out only an inch and looked to be retractable. The group also guessed the same could be for her feet. Imprinted on her neck was a symbol of a golden yellow nine-tailed fox, with its tails wrapping around her neck. Sasuke started Naruto before he was stopped by a delicate claw lightly placed on top of his lips. I'm alright Naruto unlike Hinata, I've continuously channeled chakra into some of my senses so that I was prepared to run away from the hordes of hormone-driven fangirls that I once had. Said Sasuke before she removed her finger from Naruto's lips and lightly kissed him before she released him. Not a moment after she released him he was turned around before his lips were once again assaulted only this time by Hinata. Almost delicately Hinata gripped her hands in his hair while she made gentle passes with her tongue on his lips before he opened his mouth and Hinata inserted her tongue into his own mouth. She then proceeded to explore his mouth and at the same time was able to coax his own tongue into her mouth. The second his tongue entered her mouth Hinata allowed for him to explore her own mouth and leaned in further into the kiss when he passed over a particular spot in her mouth. Sadly the kiss had to be cut short because of a necessity called oxygen. Even as they pulled apart they were breathing heavily before tears of blood began to fall from Naruto's eyes. I don't understand. How can you love someone like me? You could have all found someone better yet you chose me. Why? Asked Naruto as tears of blood continued to fall from his eyes, while both Hinata and Sasuke gently hugged him while they lightly licked away his tears. Naruto we love you because you've had the whole village against you yet no matter what they did to you, you would ignore it and continue on with your life. Once you finally had enough you took a stand for not only for your own revenge, but also for how the village would mistreat anyone who became your friend and despite what you have become you have remained humble. You don't flaunt your power like the Hyuga and Ichiha do, but you rather hide yourself and make yourself seem weak so that people would underestimate you. Even now you hide your true power and are humble something not even the village will understand. Said both Hinata and Sasuke without hesitation, while Natsuki just hugged Naruto from behind. Thank you. Whispered Naruto while his tears slowed before they finally stopped, but even still the girls wouldn't stop licking his cheeks. Ah uh, girls I've stopped crying so you don't need to continue licking my face. Said Naruto while the girls gave him one last lick before they just curled up into Naruto and rubbed their heads into his chest. You know that we have about an hour to get to the training grounds so that we can take our test against Kakashi. Said Naruto causing the girls to look up at him lazily before they closed their eyes once more. I don't really see the big deal after all he was late three hours the other day. Said Sasuke with a calm and relaxed tone. Which possibly means that he is late to everything by at least three hours. Stated Hinata also with a calm and relaxed tone. It doesn't matter he is still our Jonin sensei and think of it like this. If he is late every day by at least 3 hours we can use that time for me to help you train in using your demonic chakra. 
although I think I forgot to mention something when I mentioned the changes you would undergo. Said Naruto with a thoughtful expression while the girl's eyes twinkled with joy at the thought of training with Naruto. Oh well I guess it was nothing. Said Naruto before he was yanked out of the spring by two extremely happy girls. He was then thrown in front of the sink while the girls quickly brushed, flossed, and rinsed their mouths before they left the room in a burst of speed, completely ignoring the door and running through it. Naruto of course stood there looking the two holes in his door before he just hung his head in defeat and Mitsuki laughed at him. What kami did I piss off to have this happen to me? Moaned out Naruto as he brushed his own teeth at a normal rate, flossed, and rinsed as well before walking through the literal hole in the wall. Five minutes later. Slowly Naruto walked towards the dining room with Natsuki beside him. Naruto was wearing a skin-tight black t-shirt with a black vest over the top, black ninja pants that were wrapped off with medical tape on the bottom, black ninja sandals, and he had two kunai and shuriken pouches on each leg. On the back of the vest was the typical Uzumaki spiral design, but surrounding it were nine tails three which were gold in color, while the rest were a deep crimson. He was also carrying a scroll on his back that was a deep crimson and had a golden border. Itsuki was also wearing a skin-tight shirt, only hers was a dark crimson nearly bordering on black color, on top of the shirt was a dark crimson vest, dark crimson ninja pants that were wrapped off with a crimson colored medical tape at the bottom, crimson ninja sandals, and she had two senbin pouches and a sword strapped to her back. The vest had a the same design as Naruto's. The sword on the other hand was resting gently against her back with the help of chakra. The sword's hilt was designed to be an iron-tailed fox, with a blade coming out of the mouth, and the blade itself shone like new, making it seem as if blood never touched it. Itsuki you never officially answered why you like me care to explain. Asked Naruto as he slowed his steps a bit while Natsuki also slowed and looked at the ground almost in shame. Naruto you by all rights should be dead if not emotionally broken, yet here you are still standing and growing stronger. No demon half or full-blooded could ever go through what you have. If any did they would commit suicide to escape the pain. I know you tried a few times before meeting Matsum only to have them fail, but even that didn't stop you. You realized that it wasn't your time or someone else cared enough to stop you. Even now with the power to obliterate this village you chose not to because this is your home no matter what they put you through. Said Natsuki as she stopped a few sentences in and Naruto kept walking before he stopped as well. Certainly there must have been better suitors waiting for you back home. Said Naruto as he looked back at Natsuki. Naruto most demonic suitors flaunt their own power and drag whatever star-struck fangirl into bed. Hell most demonic men cheat on their own wife. The only time that a man wouldn't is if he has multiple mates. You would on the other hand remain loyal only to those who you decided deserve to become one of your mates. That's why I chose you. Said Natsuki as she remained rooted to the spot she stopped in looking at the ground. Yes that is true. I would only be loyal to those who were my mates. Said Naruto with a smile while he walked up to Natsuki. Once he was in front of her he gently grabbed her chin and forced her to look at his lightly smiling face before he gently kissed her. It of course didn't last long before he removed himself and swiftly bit down on her left cheek and channeled chakra into the bite. Shortly after he released her while a tattoo of a golden kitsune sat on her cheek while its tails gently waved behind it and wrapped around her left eye socket. Come on let's go get some breakfast. I'm suddenly hungry for Ichiraku Raymond said Naruto with a small smile while he grabbed her hand, and somehow both Hinata and Sasuke's, who were wearing the same clothing as the other day, hands as they ran by the two. Quickly Naruto ran through the village completely dodging villagers or tripping the council members if he came across them before he stopped in front of a small stand with a few pieces of cloth running over the entrance that said Ichiraku salivating with minor delight Naruto immediately walked in while three girls were left outside two in confusion and the other just laughing at Naruto's antics. Come on. If we don't hurry Naruto will possibly eat the stand out of food before we can even have any. Said Natsuki as she entered the stand with Hinata and Sasuke following after. Upon entering the stand they were met with the sight of Naruto sitting in one of the six bar stools and talking happily with a female. Slowly both Hinata and Sasuke narrowed their eyes dangerously as they stalked up to Naruto before they were stopped by Natsuki grabbing their shoulders. They of course turned their attention to her along with their glare before it completely dissipated from Natsuki's own glare. Don't attack her. She is more of a sister figure to Naruto and the daughter to Tucci. Whispered Natsuki quickly before she released them and took the seat to the left of Naruto and looked over the older teen. The teen stood 5'2", looked to be 17 years old, had dark brown hair that hung to the middle of her back and was restrained by a light cream-colored bandana and light brown eyes. She was wearing a light cream-colored kimono top with a light cream-colored skirt that reached to her knees, while on top of that was a white apron. Wanna flip a coin? Asked Sasuke while Hinata just nodded her head in a positive fashion. Calmly Sasuke pulled a coin out of her pocket and tossed it into the air. 
With bated breath both girls watched the coin before it fell back to the ground and landed perfectly straight up. Sasuke what are the possibilities of this happening? Asked Hinata as she picked up the coin and waited in her hand for any weight disturbances. I have no clue, but if you want you can sit next to him, but in return I get to sit next to him next time. Offered Sasuke which Hinata agreed to without hesitation before she jumped into the last seat next to Naruto, while Sasuke just took the seat next to Hinata. My Naruto you sure have been busy. It makes me really sad though. You'll be going off on missions meaning you won't be able to visit me as much as you once did. Said the female while she gave Naruto the puppy pout. Am Nichan you know I could never forget about you. Said Naruto with a light laugh while he gently patted Am's head, causing her to pout further. Am stop tormenting the poor boy and take his order already. Shouted a voice before another person walked out of the back of the stand. This person was a male that looked to be at least 43 years old, stood 5'5", five five, had grey hair that was only noticeable on the sides and back of his head, since the rest of it was covered by light cream-coloured hat, and his eyes were completely shut. He was also wearing a cream kimono top with matching cream pants, while on top of the kimono was a light blue apron. But Dad Naruto hasn't been here in so long. Whined A.M. while she turned the puppy pout onto her own father. Then you should ask him what he wants along with his guests, then ask him how he has been. Said the older man while he smirked at his daughter who looked back to see both Hinata and Sasuke with their extra features showing. What are you two doing? You can't just walk around the village like that. Hissed out A.M. as she quickly pulled both girls over the counter. What do you mean we can't walk around the village like this? Asked both girls with restrained anger while the fur on their tails stood stock straight. What she means is you can't have your extra features showing. It's okay for when you're in a private setting, but out in public it's a death sentence waiting to happen. Explained the older man while he quickly slapped a seal onto their foreheads. Shortly after applying the seals both girls fox tails and eats disappeared in a minor wave. Oh we didn't know. Said both girls as they looked at the ground depressed. Don't beat yourselves up. I should have taught you a simple illusion that all demons use to hide themselves in the human world. Sadly my hunger and slight overexposed to love somewhat fried my brain. For now you'll need to wear those seals until I can teach you the illusion. For now just get back over here so we can eat. Said Naruto with anger directed at himself while the girls nodded in response and rejoined Naruto and Natsuki. Well now then what will you all be having? Asked A.M. with a chipper tone in hopes of lightening the dreary mood. I'll have three large bowls of your vegetable ramen. Said Naruto with a minor scowl, but it was outshone by his enthusiasm for being able to have ramen. I'll have a large bowl of beef, chicken, and vegetable combination ramen if you don't mind. Said Natsuki with a smile. Um I'll have a large miso ramen. Said Hinata shyly while she lightly looked at the counter. I'll have the same as Natsuki if you don't mind. Said Sasuke while Am wrote down their orders before handing them off towards her father. Am how did your father know how to hide our extra features? Asked Hinata in hopes of creating a form of conversation. Well as you know my father and I are about the only family that Naruto has other than the Hokage, and as such we are informed of certain things by Naruto. My father was actually at one point in Anbu and was a SEAL apprentice before he retired, married my mother and had me. Back before Naruto could even hide his features Natsuki was required to hide them with a Jinjutsu, especially since Naruto didn't have the proper control. One day my father asked Natsuki if it was possible to create a seal that could hide the extra features up until either his chakra destroyed the seal, or he could cast the Jinjutsu without any help. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but basically it took them at least nearly a whole month just to draw out the seal and be certain that nothing was missing, then it took another whole month for the Hokage to go over the seal and fix or add anything that he felt was necessary, and finally it only took a week to prepare for the sealing. After that father began to create a smaller paper seal that once applied it would immediately blend into the skin tone of the person and would only disintegrate once the Jinjutsu was mastered to the point that anyone could hold it up even in combat situations. Stated A.M. while both Tuchi and Natsuki lightly blushed from the comments. A.M. stop chatting and get these ramen to our customers. Stated the old man from the kitchen while he balanced four bowls in his arms. Of course father. Said A.M. as she quickly grabbed two of the bowls and set them down in front of Naruto, while the older man set the other two bowls down in front of Natsuki and Sasuke before he returned to the kitchen and exited with another two bowls. Quickly he set the one more bowl down in front of Naruto and the other in front of Hinata before he backed away while everyone grabbed a pair of chopsticks. I did Akamasu. Said everyone before they dug in before both Hinata and Sasuke had to stop halfway through their own bowls to see that Naruto was already on his second. Slowly they gulped down their current mouth full and watched Naruto in fascination and morbid curiosity as Naruto stuffed nearly half the bowl of noodles into his mouth. Silently they looked back to their bowls and just ate at a similar pace only slightly more dignified. Thanks for the Raymond old man and A.M. Nichan. 
said Naruto while both Hinata and Sasuke just started to drink the broth before they set their bowls down onto the counter with a gentle clink. No problem Naruto just promised to come by more often and tell us about what is going on. Said A.M. as she picked up his three bowls, Natsuki's, Hinata's and Sasuke's bowl, before she shoved them off to her father, who just so happened to walk out from the back door. We'll be certain to stop by after every mission A.M. sent. Said both Hinata and Sasuke as they got out of their seats. Please just call me A.M. or Nichan. After all you are going to be two of Naruto's wives. Said A.M. while she gave them a small wink with a small laugh as Naruto and Natsuki left the stand. Oh okay A.M said both girls once more before they followed after Naruto and Natsuki. Luckily it didn't take them long to catch up to the two others before they were off towards the seven training grounds while talking over what the test would be. If you ask me it may be a test of skill so he can see how we rank, how we react in combat, and possibly to the death of a teammate. Said Sasuke while the others listened while they thought over what the test was. It could also be a test of teamwork to assure that we wouldn't abandon a comrade in the thick of battle. That was what the foundation of Kanoha was built upon said Hinata as she held a few points in her saying. If you ask me it will be a combination of the two. Said Naruto as they stopped on a small bridge that went over a small creek into the training ground. The training ground was a large open space with another creek on the other side of the grounds, while both the left and right side were covered with forest. In front of the right forest were three logs which were firmly planted in the ground while behind them was a black stone with several names imprinted on the surface. Standing in front of the stone was Kakashi. Hey, Kakashi-sensei shouted Sasuke completely forgetting about Hinata, Naruto, Natsuki, and her own advanced hearing which pretty much floored them. Silently Kakashi turned to them before a small eye smile stretched on his only noticeable portion of his face, before he flash stepped, so he was in front of his team. Good morning team. Are you ready for your test? Asked Kakashi while everyone slowly stood back up while lightly nodding their heads. Good. Now then your test is simple all you have to do is get these two bells from me, before this timer goes off directly at noon said Kakashi as he pulled out two bells from his back pouch and then a small clock that showed it was clearly 11 o'clock. Not a second after he quickly flash stepped so he was standing beside the three posts. He then proceeded to set the clock down before tying the two bells onto his waist. Um Kakashi sensei what happens if we don't get a bell and why are there only two? Asked Hinata while she mentally went back to what she said about the test being about teamwork. Well if you don't get a bell before the timer goes off you will be tied to one of these posts, well the other two of you will be allowed to have one of the two lunches I packed for you. Also if you don't get a bell you will be sent back to the ninja academy. Oh and one last thing come at me with the intent to kill. Now then 3, 2, 1, Tadakai. Stated Kakashi while everyone immediately jumped into the surrounding scenery all except for Naruto. Well it seems that they have hiding down, although Naruto could use some work. Thought Kakashi while he gently slid two kunai out from his sleeves and quickly put them into a reverse grip. Here I come Kakashi sensei. Whispered Naruto before four more of him popped into existence beside him. Calmly Naruto lifted his hand before he brought it down in a downward strike, along with a blade of wind that traveled straight towards Kakashi, causing his single eye to widen as he jumped out of the way just barely in the nick of time. Not a moment later he felt something strike him from behind sending him flying towards the forest, just as several kunai and shuriken came flying towards. Quickly thinking on the fly Kakashi replaced himself with a Naruto clone that was close to the real Naruto. Running on autopilot Kakashi then grabbed Naruto's shirt collar before following it up with three quick knees to his stomach before spinning him and letting go of him. Slowly Kakashi released a silent breath before he had to jump to the left to dodge a fireball that blew up where he formerly stood while also sending boulders flying into the air. Not a moment later Natsuki appeared behind the boulders before she just lightly tapped them and sent them flying straight towards Kakashi, forcing him to quickly replace himself with a poor defenseless log that was crushed into Kindle. They're really aiming to kill me. Thought Kakashi before he had to grab a wrist and quickly pinned the person to the ground while he held his knee to the back of her head. Ma patience is a ninja's greatest ally. Said Kakashi. So is deception Kakashi. Replied the girl before she puffed out of existence and the place around him wavered lightly before completely dispelling. The area was the same, except for the fact he couldn't detect his student's chakra signatures lightly getting up, he cautiously walked towards the middle of the field and looked around in hopes of noticing something out of place. Ninja art. 10,000 years of death. Lightly whispered Naruto as he rose up out of the ground behind Kakashi with his hands in the Taurus symbol before he shoved them up into his ass and released the chakra. The result was rather comical since the only part of Kakashi that could be seen was his right eye and it seemed to show a combination of surprise, shock, horror, and fear all mixed into that one area before he was sent flying towards the creek before he landed in it. 
it only took him a couple seconds to resurface, but by that time Hinata had already walked towards the water with a devil's smile on her face. Water style. Multi-water dragon jutsu. Stated Hinata as seven dragons made of water surrounded Kakashi with their deep yellow eyes glaring down at Kakashi. Not wasting a minute Kakashi immediately jumped into the air, knowing that the dragons couldn't reach him up there, before his eyes widened in shock, as all the dragons started to fire human-sized water bullets at him. Pain. Grand Fireball Jutsu. Stated Kakashi as he quickly preformed the hand signs removed his mask slightly before breathing out a large fireball. Putin. Great breakthrough. Said Kakashi once more as winds came from behind him and struck the fireball increasing its heat and size, before it stuck the water balls creating a minor explosion. Kakashi then proceeded to dive back down to the surface, only to have to dodge water dragons, as they aimed to strike him, faintly, while dodging one of the water dragons he caught sight of Hinata, ordering the dragons with a single act of pointing her finger at him. He of course in his moment of distraction, was struck by one of the water dragons, completely soaking him and making him land in small puddles. Slowly he got back up only to see Natsuki which scared him, no, it wasn't because of the fact that she was the most powerful demon is was because flowing between her middle and point finger were little bolts of lightning. Baton. Lighting shot. Stated Natsuki while she pointed her fingers at the puddles before the lightning flew off her fingers straight for the puddle. Acting quickly Kakashi immediately replaced himself with another log as he landed a few feet away from the puddles, while the log was immediately charred from the lightning water combo. Quickly he drew out several kunai before he began to toss them at Natsuki and Hinata, who dodged them without a problem, until she noticed that they were exploding kunai. Acting quickly Kakashi quickly activated the seals, causing the tags to blow up and knock both Natsuki and Hinata unconscious. Page Bushin. Said Kakashi while he took a few deep breaths while he quickly gave a mental command to his clones who followed it without question. Silently he watched as the clones tied both girls up onto different posts that were away from one another. Kakashi also took notice of the time only to realize that it had only been nearly five in minuets since the test started. Only half an hour and already they have me breathing heavily. I definitely feel sorry for whoever manages to piss off these genin. Thought Kakashi while he instinctively reached for his book pouch before he stopped and changed his direction and quickly pulled out a kunai. Not a moment later several kuni and shuriken were flying towards him and he was able to completely deflect them or dodge them without a problem. Putin. Grand Windstorm. Stated someone from behind Kakashi before he was suddenly struck by gale force winds that sent him flying, while his clothing gained several cuts on it, all except for his mask, before he struck a tree face first. But shaky movements Kakashi removed himself from the tree with a few bits of tree bark, sticking to his face mask. Quickly Kakashi shook his head back and forth, causing the tree bark to fall off his face mask which was still in perfect condition. Shakily he got up to his feet before he turned to see Naruto standing there performing another set of hand signs, while Sasuke stood next to him performing a different set of head signs. Pain. Kairu Eden. Shouted Sasuke as she finished her hand signs before a large fire dragon came from her mouth flying towards Kakashi. Putin. Great breakthrough. Shouted Naruto not a moment later as the wind sped up and increased the dragon fire's intensity. Shit, 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 shit. Mentally shouted Kakashi as he flash steeped out of the area and into the forest behind the two teens, and watched as the dragon created a crater in the ground that was burning along the edges. He then proceeded to watch as both of them went to their tied-up teammates and quickly cut them free before grabbing them and running off into the forest. Well they have the teamwork part down thought I think it's time I get serious. Thought Kakashi as he gently placed his hand over his forehead protector. But Naruto and Sasuke. Currently both Naruto and Sasuke were traveling through the trees with their unconscious teammates on their backs, before they stopped in a clearing and set both girls down. We need to wake them up. Any ideas Sasuke? Asked Naruto as he watched Sasuke gain a devilish smirk on her face. He then watched as Sasuke bent down until her face was even with Hinata's, before she gently pressed her lips against Hinata's, while gently rubbing her cheek with her hand. Naruto was of course wide-eyed with a blush coating his face before he turned around and attempted to not watch. I think I'll stick with smelling salts. Said Naruto while he walked towards Natsuki's prone form and pulled out a small vial. He then carefully removed the cork stopper from the bottom before he gently held it underneath her nose, letting her get a small whiff before he pulled the bottle away, just as she started to groan. A few seconds later her eyes lightly fluttered open half open while she gently set her left hand on her head. Ugh Naruto? Asked Natsuki as she opened her eyes further and took in her surroundings. Where's Kakashi, where are we, and why in the holy Kami's name are Hinata and Sasuke kissing one another? Asked Natsuki while her eyes landed on Hinata and Sasuke in a heavy kiss causing her eyes widen in shock. 
one I have no idea where Kakashi is, two we're about two to three minutes away from training ground seven, and finally Sasuke started to kiss Hinata to wake her up. Said Naruto while he quickly pulled out a scroll and tossed it at them, and successfully hided Sasuke in the head, causing her to yelp in pain. Naruto what was that for? Growled out Sasuke as she rubbed her head trying to ease the throbbing. Sorry but we need the two of you to be focused. From my best guess I would say we have at least 50 minutes before our test is over. Kakashi will also be more than on guard so we need a plan. Said Naruto as both Hinata and Sasuke nodded their heads in agreement. Okay but first of all how did I do those jutsu? Asked Hinata as she thought back to the water dragons and water bullets. It might be a possible side effect of becoming a demon. Since Naruto was changed by my power he also received some of my knowledge on jutsu. So possibly when Naruto changed you too, you may have also received some of the knowledge that Naruto had received. Stated Natsuki before a kunai landed in the center of their temporary base. Acting quickly everyone got up onto their feet before they were pulled underground with only their heads showing. Earth style. Headhunter jutsu. Stated Kakashi's voice before he appeared in the center of the group with his left eye showing, causing everyone's eyes open in shock. Kakashi's left eye was a Sharingan eye. Lesson 1. Ninjutsu. Was all Kakashi said with a serious expression before it was broken by laughter from his captives. Ninja rule number one never assume the enemy is captured until they are either unconscious or dead, and number two look underneath the underneath. Said all the genin while Kakashi just looked confused. Brand clone explosion jutsu. Stated the genin before they began to glow before blowing up sending Kakashi flying into the air. Quickly Kakashi righted himself in the air while pulling out a kunai and blocked a sword slash that would have cut him in half without a problem, although the force behind the blow sent him towards the ground. When he was about to strike the ground, he quickly landed on his hands before backflipping a few times and jumped into a tree, just as several copies of Naruto popped out of the ground, attempting to give him several uppercuts to his jaw. Lesson 2. Tujutsu. Said Kakashi as he quickly rushed Naruto as he popped out of the ground and landed a solid punch to his gut before kicking him in the side of his head. He then followed up with a few false punches aimed at Naruto's head before he swept him off his feet and landed a punch to his face, driving his head into the ground before he was forced to block an axe kick from Sasuke. Sasuke then proceeded to follow up with another kick aimed for Kakashi's right side, only to have that successfully blocked before a small smirk graced her face and she reached out and touched one of the bells before she was thrown back. Acting quickly she quietly performed a backflip and landed on her feet while Naruto got out of his creator and joined her with Natsuki appearing via Jinjutsu. Wait there's only three of them here, where's the four started thinking Kakashi before it was interrupted. You're in my field of division. A trigram seal. 64 palm. Stated Hinata's voice from behind him. Do palm. Stated Hinata as she lightly tapped on Kakashi's arms. Four palm. Said Hinata once more as she tapped four more places on Kakashi. Eight palm. Hinata again as she continued to strike him closing his chakra points. 16 palm. Once again Hinata was striking chakra points, only she was moving smoother and quicker, while increasing the amount of chakra added. 32 palm. Hinata was nimbly dodging and any resistance Kakashi placed up and getting past his defenses with ease. 64 palm. Shouted Hinata as she pulled her hands back before slamming them forward and striking the main chakra point in the human body, sending him flying back a few feet and down to a single knee breathing heavily. Although Kakashi didn't miss how his possible students were also breathing heavily while they also collapsed to their own knees, before they all could hear a ringing sound coming from the training grounds. Looks like time's up. Said Kakashi as he breathed heavily while placing his hide over his Sharingan eye and shakily got up to his feet. He then walked over to Hinata and helped her to her feet, while Naruto helped both Natsuki and Sasuke up to their feet while leaning against one another. They then proceeded to walk back towards the training ground in silence, and once they got there they then went and sat down in front of the stone with Kakashi in front of them. Now then does anyone know what this test was about? Asked Kakashi as he stared intently at his possible students who in turn looked at one another. This was a test of skill to see how we would react in particular combat situations, but the whole test was about teamwork. Said everyone while Kakashi's patented eye smile appeared on his face. Very good you're the first team to finally figure that out, but since no one was able to get a bell I'm afraid that you all fail, but I'm willing to allow for you to all have a second chance in about an hour. So until then feel free to eat one of the bento boxes that I packed. Said Kakashi as he got up and started to walk off before he turned around. Oh and one last thing. Naruto is not allowed to eat anything. Said Kakashi before Naruto was pulled underground so only his head was showing. Naruto's left eye was slightly twitching before he took notice of the fact that there were two acorns tied to his waist. The Kakashi-sensei why are there two acorns tied to your waist? 
asked Naruto while Kakashi instinctively patted the bells only to have his eyes widen in shock. Quickly he turned around and looked at Hinata who shook her head in a negative fashion along with Sasuke. Natsuki on the other hand was lazily tossing the bells in the air before she took notice of Kakashi looking at her. What looking for these scarecrow? Asked Natsuki before she tossed them to Hinata and Sasuke. Sasuke then tossed one onto Naruto's head while he smirked. Well then I guess you pass, but I was planning on passing you anyway, considering you all were able to work as a team, and the fact most of you know several high-ranking jutsu. Sulu congratulations meet here tomorrow for your first missions as ninja at 10 o'clock. Jana. Said Kakashi before he disappeared in a puff of smoke, while three genin and a demoness smiled and shouted in happiness before removing Naruto from the earth. With Kakashi. Currently Kakashi was walking towards the Hokage Tower while smiling happily at his team that he now had. I not only have Sensei's son but one of Abito's family. Finally I can repay my department to you Abito, but I had better not show favoritism. I don't need another me walking around I mean wouldn't be bad, it would actually too extremely funny if not for the fact that my guy's mini clone would consider the person their eternal rival. At that Kakashi had to suppress a mild shudder before he steeled his emotions and walked into the Hokage's office, where several other instructors stood but only two stood out. The first instructor was a female that stood 5'5", five five, had deep crimson eyes, black hair that reached to the middle of her back, and looked no older than 27. She was wearing a form of medical tape that acted similar to a dress and did little to hide the D-cup she had and blue ninja sandals. Standing next to her was a male that stood 6'2", had brown eyes, blue hair that was short, was smoking a cigarette, and looked no older than 27. He was wearing a green jonin vest over a blue long sleeve shirt, blue pants with a shuriken and kunai pouch, and blue ninja sandals. Ah Kakashi nice of you to join us on time. Stated the Hokage as he lazily puffed out a small stream of smoke from his pipe. Now then Kurina Yuhi pass or fail? Asked the Hokage as he carefully folded his hands on his desk so not to disturb his paperwork. They passed with flying colors. Currently Sakura is weak but has the finer points for Jinjutsu. Shino is just like his clan he doesn't base his opinions off of what he hears but rather what he witnesses or learns about any person. Kiba on the other hand is loud, brash, and disrespectful to not only females, but anyone who pisses him off. Altogether they have the ability to become a successful tracking and capture team. Said Kurinai as she bowed to the Hokage. Good. Now then assume a Suratobi pass or fail. Asked a Hokage as he turned his attention towards his only son. They passed if only barely. Ino, Choji, and Shikamaru have firm grasps on their family techniques, but they also have their own flaws. Ino is rather fantasy struck and believes that she will be saved by her knight in shining armor and not to mention extremely bossy. Choji is too trusting but has a firm grasp on what a ninja's job entails. Shikamaru on the other hand is extremely lazy and considers everything troublesome unless it's watching clouds. Altogether they may make another perfect Ino Shikacho group if their flaws are finally hammered out. Stated Asuma as he spoke around his cigarette before bowing to his father. Good. Now Kakashi should I just put your team down as a failure? Asked the Hokage while several Jonin senseis laughed lightly under their breath. Actually they passed. They were able to work together from the very beginning of the test and were able to force me to reveal that. Said Kakashi with pride while several Jonin had their eyes open wide. I take it that Naruto also did that with those three. Said Saratobi as he looked at Kakashi for confirmation. I do believe he did change them. I was able to catch the seal array on them from time to time. Now then if you excuse me I need to think up a tour I mean training regime for those three. Said Kakashi as a slow dark chuckle rose from deep within his chest. Nervously all the jonin stepped back while looking at the Hokage. Just don't overdo it. After all we don't need to kill them Kakashi. Replied the Hokage with some mirth while Kakashi gave a simple nod of the head as he walked out of the office. Three weeks later. This is Moon Angel, approximate distance from target is 5 meters. This is Ice Queen, same distance from target. This is Solar Flare, currently above the target. By the way next time I'm choosing the code names Kakashi. But you now have permission to engage the target and Naruto don't tell me what to do. Said Kakashi before Naruto fell from a tree right above the target and was able to successfully grab it. I got ya. Smirked out Naruto. Is there a red ribbon on the right ear with the name of Tor on it? Asked Kakashi via headset. Yep. Excellent work Naruto. Now join up with your teammates and well proceed to consider this mission complete. Said Kakashi over a small earpiece while Naruto just nodded in response and proceeded to the meeting point. When he reached the meeting point he noticed both Hinata and Sasuke sitting on the ground while Kakashi was reading a brand new Icha Icha Paradise book. One fully captured cat ready for delivery. Said Naruto as he proudly presented a log. Um Naruto that's a log. Said Kakashi as he looked at the log in Naruto's hands. 
Naruto of course was looking at it with horror before he heard something meowing at him. Cautiously everyone looked into a nearby tree to see the target walking upside down on a branch while taunting them. Bakashi is that cat walking on a tree branch upside down. Shouted Sasuke as she pointed a perfectly sharpened claw at said cat. It would appear so although my question is on how long it has been able to do this. Especially since I remember having to chase the same cat and it was never able to do something like this. Said Kakashi while his only good eye began to twitch in annoyance. He mime authorizing the means of anything to catch that cat. Stated Kakashi while everyone started to pull out kunai, shuriken, ninja wire, and several other things. Tora of course just stuck its tongue out at them before it started to jump off towards Konoha. At that cat. Shouted Kakashi as his team took off after the cat and were able to find it after a few minutes laying out in sunlight just relaxing. Slowly evil little grins plastered themselves onto the three genin's faces while they silently pulled out some more kunai with ninja wire on them before they let them go and wrap the cat in the ninja wire. Once all the wire was constricting the cat the team jumped down and quickly tied it up so it was hanging upside down on a stick before they successfully marched back to their sensei. Okay this time I believe that we have it. Stated Naruto as he along with the other two meet up with Kakashi once more. Uh where is it? Asked Kakashi as he looked at the cut ropes on the stick while the genin could only stare at the stick with annoyance while they stared back into the forest to see the cat laughing at them. Silently all the genin looked at one another before they took off running after the cat with Kakashi following them. Or of course just started to run through the forest running through hollowed out logs, in between closely grown trees and across a small river, before Hinata finally caught up to it, only to get her foot caught in a deer trap and leaving her hanging in the air while Naruto and Sasuke continued after the cat. The next person to nearly catch the cat was Sasuke as she had successfully caught a hold of its tail, only for it to perform a substitution with Hinata, so Sasuke's hand was groping Hinata's, but which caused Naruto to turn a deep shade of red while Kakashi just giggled perversely. That was before both Hinata and Sasuke gave him a good punch to his jaw that was chakra enforced and sent him flying while screaming pervert. Naruto of course grabbed both girls by their shoulders before he pulled them back to where Hinata once hung before stopping short. Standing at the water's edge was Tora who was lightly lapping at the water. Slowly Naruto motioned for the girls to stay put before he silently crept up on Tora before he pounced on Tora and successfully captured it once more. We weren't going anywhere this time. Stated Naruto before he was suddenly shocked by lightning and dropped Tora who was bristling with electricity while it flashed a devious smile. Shortly after Tora released a bolt of electricity from its mouth at Naruto that sent him flying back towards Hinata and Sasuke. With angry glares the girl stared at the cat who was still glowing lightly with static before it completely disappeared. Suiten. Water prison jutsu. Stated Kakashi as a sphere of water entrapped the cat while Kakashi's left had remained in the prison. Kakashi sensei let go of the jutsu. Shouted both girls while Kakashi looked at them with confusion before he was shocked by lighting and with him standing in water while holding a water prison only made it worse. After a few seconds the water prison was completely gone while Kakashi could best be described as a well-charred piece of meat while he was also covered with a small amount of soot. Oh look at all the pre women. Slurred out Kakashi as he released a small puff of smoke from his mouth before falling over and being carried away by the river. Both Hinata and Sasu couldn't decide whether to help out their sensei or leave him as he was because of what he said as they watched the river carry him away. While they watched him they were also able to hear the sound of a metal door meeting against plastic before they turned their attention to Tora, only to see Naruto standing there with Tora successfully locked inside a plastic pet cage. We are never taking this mission ever again. Said Naruto with seriousness while the girls nodded in agreement before they headed off towards the village. Okage's office. Here you are old man. One Tora the cat successfully captured. Said Naruto as he slammed the cage down onto the Hokage's desk while Saratobi looked at him questionably with his pipe in his mouth as did Aruka who was sitting beside him. Okay Naruto. Now then care to explain where your sensei is, why your clothing is burned, and why the cat is in a cage. Asked the Hokage as he removed his pipe and looked at the three. Last time we saw Kakashi he was taking a minor nap in a river. As for the other two you wouldn't believe me even if I showed you. Said Naruto while well, the Hokage gave him the look that said try me. That cat was able to use chakra and used a rate and jutsu on Naruto and Kakashi. Said Sasuke as she glared at the caged animal. Almost as if sensing the glare the cage began to jump, shake and rattle. I hardly doubt the Tor could do that. Isn't that rig started the Hokage as he opened the cage only to have a cat bite his hand and add lightning chakra to the bite, shocking the old man and causing him to fall backwards while the cat attempted to jump to freedom only to be caught by an extremely large woman who crushed the cat in between her assets. Oh my baby Tora those mean ninja didn't hurt you now did they? Beside you know better than to run off without mommy oh yes you do. 
gushed the owner while she crushed the cat in a hug as the genin smirked evilly while hopping that the women would kill the cat. Here you go Sarah Toby the money for the mission. Said the woman as she set the money on his desk before walking out of the room while still crushing the life out of the cat. Right as the woman was leaving Kakashi walked into the room to see Sarah Toby on the floor before looking at his team. The cat was all they said, while well, Kakashi could only shake his head in disappointment before taking his position behind his squad. Luckily Saratobi was able to get up while holding his head. Okay squad 7. Seeing as the cat is able to perform jutsu, I'm raising the rank of that mission to at least B rank. You will also be paid accordingly. Now then I'm certain that you'll also want another mission. Right now we have babysitting the chief counselor's three-year-old, helping his wife to do the shopping, digging up potatoes started Saratobi while he read the missions off a list before being interrupted by a cat squeal and the women from before running back into the office. Saratobi my poor Tora-chan has just run off once again. Said the woman before she ran out of the room. Or catching Tora the cat for the third time this week. Finished the third hokage with a sigh. No way. I'm a ninja not some fucking babysitter, farmer, or animal control. I'm supposed to be a killer. Stated Naruto in defiance. How dare you Naruto. You're just a brand new gen and with no form of combat experience. How do you plan on protecting yourself of your teammates if you're outnumbered? Shouted Aruka as he slammed his hands against the desk. Aruka I'm not human and neither are they. Said Naruto as the girls removed their jinjutsus showing their extra appendages. It seems you don't understand the understanding of the tasks you've been given. Listen, many different kinds of requests come into our village every day. From simple babysitting to assassinations. These requests are carefully recorded, analyzed, then ranked A, B, C, or D depending on their difficulty. We ninja are also ranked by ability. Hokage at the top, Jonin, Chunin, and Jenin at the bottom. At the highest level we select the missions and assign them to ninja who have the appropriate skill and experience, and if the mission is successful, we receive a fee that supports our village and our work. Since you're untried Jen and just starting down the shinobi path you are given D-rank missions of course. Explained the hokage before he took notice of Naruto not even paying attention. Anyway I was thinking of trying the Tinktatsu Raymond today. What about you Hinata and Sasuke? Asked Naruto as he completely ignored the hokage. Sounds really good. Maybe we should just see if A.M. and Tucci would be willing to make a bowl large enough for all of us to eat out of. Suggested Hinata while Kakashi listened in. Silence. Shouted the Hokage as he stared down all four ninja in front of him. Oh sorry. Said Kakashi as he rubbed the back of his head and I smiled at the Hokage. Listen old man. I'm not asking for a B-ranked mission. I just want one that will get me out of these walls for a few weeks. Is that so much to ask? Said Naruto as he stared down the Hokage. For a few minutes nothing was said as the two shinobi stared at one another before the old hokage released a sigh. Fine I'll give you a simple C rank. The mission is to escort Tazuna back to Wave Country while guarding him from bandits there and while he works on a bridge. Haruka please go get Tazuna-san. Said the hokage as he replaced his pipe in his mouth before it broke in half. After a few moments all three Genin and Kakashi had to cover their noses as they were assaulted by the scent of very cheap sake before the door opened up. What the? I pay you good money and all I get are a whole bunch of little snot-nosed kids. Said the person that walked in before he took a long swig of his sake, allowing for everyone to take in his appearance. The man stood roughly around 5'8", had short grey hair, black eyes with glasses over them, and looked to be 59. He was wearing a lightweight brown sleeveless shirt with light brown pants that were held around his waist by a rope belt and brown sandals. He also had a white towel around his neck while a forest green backpack was on his back. He also had a faint blush from his sake. And you the two dark-haired girls. You look like you could be easily taken out without a problem. Said the man as the girls gained tick marks on their foreheads before they attempted to jump their higher. They would have nearly done so too if Naruto didn't quickly grab them and hold them down. Trust me when I say this fool. Don't piss off anyone who bears the mark of a ninja village, for it could be the very last thing you ever do. Said Naruto while he quickly pressed at the base of their spines, causing them to immediately calm down. I am Tazuna, a master bridge builder, and I must return to my country started Tazuna before he was interrupted. Yes we're aware of the mission details Mr. Tazuna. Team prepare for a month long mission and be at the gate at noon tomorrow. Said Kakashi as he turned his attention towards his team. Of course Kakashi sensei. Replied all three genin before they disappeared in a small whirlwind. And cut. What if Narahina Naruto create harem with Hinata female Kyubix female Hakux female Sasu Kiba bashing? And thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.